It's the UFC 100 Watch Party! Watch along with MMAFighting.com as we go back in time to July 11th, 2009 for a historic pay-per-view event. And in the main event, the UFC Heavyweight Championship is on the line as Brock Lesnar defends his title against the first man to ever defeat him in a mixed martial arts bout, the former champion, Frank Mir. In the co-main event, one of the greatest of all time, George Rush St. Pierre puts the UFC welterweight title on the line against Tiago Alves. Live on the MMA Fighting YouTube channel, on the road to UFC 300, this is the UFC 100 Watch Party! Ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are live and welcome to the UFC 100 watch party here on MMAfighting.com. I am Mike Heck. We are in the way back machine and taking you back to this historic event, which had two title fights at the top of the bill, which doesn't seem all that rare now, but back then, pretty rare thing to have two title fights on a UFC event. The main event, Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir, two for the heavyweight title. We'll also go back, watch George St. Pierre defend his welterweight title against Tiago Alves. Michael Bisming versus Dan Henderson. And we also get the UFC debut of Yoshihiro Akiyama taking on Alan Belcher. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get to all that, joining me from start to finish, producer extraordinaire, the baddest dash in all of MMA. We'll see how many throwback chair swings we get from this from E. Casey Lydon. How are you doing, sir? How's the angle? <laughs> <laughs> 100 spins okay that's too many that's too many i am happy to be here man ufc 100 ah uh, i low history i was not working in mma journalism i was actually working for a little mixed martial arts co-leader called elite xc at the time so uh this is fun i'm i'm, I'm i um man i i I, I watch this event, but um, I'm very excited. I'm just, I'm very hyped. Too many, too many spare. I, I need to spin the chair more. I need to spin the chair more. It's just I'm too hyped. I'm too hyped. I think it's all this great Celsius. Uh, let's do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm drinking one too. What a coincidence. Hey. <laughs> uh, I have the, uh, I have the Oasis vibe today. Uh, and there are Oasis vibes ahead of us here. We'll have some special guests from the MA fighting team hopping on for a bit throughout, but kicking us off. Deputy editor over at MMA Fighting, incredible journalist, one of the best in the sport. And coincidentally enough, he was boots on the ground in Las Vegas for UFC 100. He was working this event. Let us say hello to Stephen Morocco. Stephen, how we doing, my man? Look at that. Here Whoa. is my credential. MMAweekly.com. Up in the rafters is where I was. Um, also, my beverage choice, Waterloo Peach from Costco. <laughs> Uh, in Clackamas or so I'm hydrating and I'm also ready to walk down this nostalgic magic carpet with you guys for a bit. Yes. Uh, we're going to get rolling with this in a moment. We'll let you know how this is all going to go down in a moment, but, uh, just a brief synopsis of this event. Uh, let me pull up my notes here and then we'll throw out a few little random facts. We'll do a little storytelling. Uh, but UFC 100 took place July 11, 2009 at the Mandalay Bay event center in Las Vegas. Ended up being a four fight main card on pay-per-view. It wasn't actually supposed to be that way. It was actually supposed to be a five fight main card. But due to time constraints, the match between John Fitch and Paulo Tiago got bumped to the post limbs. When was the last time a freaking UFC card had a post limb fight? Uh, the event had a huge gate for the time, over $5 million. And at the time, according to reports, it was the most bought pay-per-view in UFC history. 1.6 million buys reportedly, a record that stood for many years until UFC 202 in August of 2016. When payouts were disclosed in Nevada, yes, there was a time where Nevada disclosed the payouts, uh, according to reports and old files, uh, $1.8 million spread throughout the fighters who competed, GSP and Brock Lesnar leading the way, getting $400,000 each. Bonus winners got $100,000 on this card on this historic night, and the event also featured on the preliminary card names such as Mark Coleman, who defeated Stephen Bonner, Jim Miller, who will fought at 200 and will be fighting at 300 as well, defeated Mac Danzig, and it even saw a young man by the name of John Jones, the now heavyweight champion of the world, competing on the prelims. It was his third UFC outing. He improved to 9-0 and as a pro, and a little trivia question, UFC 100 was the first time John Jones got a finish inside the UFC octagon as he submitted Jake Bryan. 
uh, Jake O'Brien, excuse me, in the second round. So this is what we're going to do, guys. We're going to we're going to start the way back machines in a moment. So I want you all to do right this second. Um, just head to ESPN Plus or Fight Pass, wherever you're watching this main card, load it up, hit play, and then pause it right away. And then I'll tell you when we're going to do the countdown. But just get it all up. We'll waste a couple of minutes while you guys do that. And then we will get going with the fights. But Steven, you were there. You covered UFC 100. You were way up in the rafters on fight night. What do you remember the most about the fight week, the event, boots on the ground for this one? Because this was a very big deal at the time. I was a fan. I was not a gigantic, never miss an event fan in 2009. But for UFC 100 with Brock Lesnar in the main event, we got a huge group together and we watched this one for sure. Well, I guess it's how granular do you want on the detail? Uh, There are a couple of challenges here, one of which is time. Uh, A lot of time has passed between now and back in 2009. So uh, my memories, I have a couple of really strong memories from covering the event. That was back when I was covering for not only MMA Weekly, but uh, Full Contact Fighter. Um, And... Uh, I, I sent you the PR schedule to just give you a sense of how big of a deal it was because it was definitely treated as a, a very marquee event. We all got basically swag when we showed up on site. There was a whole week of events planned around this event. And um, the media interest for it was significant in the way that I hadn't experienced before because I got put up in the rafters, like I said. Um, that was time I, I, but but not the last time I would experience that um, at a U.S. Uh, the event, um, and that was because uh, in large part of the not only card but Brock Lesnar on the card. You know he was a massive massive star, and whenever he came around, he had a tendency to shift the whole of the event and sort of center it around him. All right. Uh, Casey, I want to get your thoughts on how we watch this, but we're gonna keep we're gonna keep the chit chat going. But first, uh, let's go ahead and get the broadcast started. So head to ESPN Plus, Fight Pass, wherever you're watching. Uh, when each fight starts, we'll give you the clocks as well. So if you're jumping in a little bit later, we'll let you know. We'll also have a clock on the screen so you guys can be synced up with us. And so right now, I'm gonna count down from five, and then I'm gonna end with and go. All right, so when I say and go, you hit play and we'll get rolling here. So on your marks, five, four, three, two, one, and go. All right, so hopefully you hit play. You see the warning. Don't be ripping off our shit because you'll get in trouble. Five years, $250,000 fine, all that stuff. So hopefully you hit play. Uh, We'll get rolling here. But gentlemen, uh, Casey, do what? What do you remember about this event? Do you remember where you watched it? Do, any any memories from this at all? Z- I'm, right now, I'm seeing a giant Zuffa. What is Zuffa? What is this? I don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, God, oh, hold on, sound. hold on. Gladiator uh, man's coming up. You got the Gladiator man. Yep. Wow. I got. Yeah, I got. A, there he is. There's Hendo. Right. Black and white fighters giving little promos. Remember those days? Those are fun. I feel so old. <laughs> I watched like this. Oh my god! He looks like a child. <laughs> a child, yes. Oh my god! It's so crazy. I have not watched this event since July 11, 2009. Just throwing that out there. And this was coming off the uh, the Ultimate Fighter, so this was the the finale. It was yes. This is the uh, the United States versus the United Kingdom season. And the rivalry was brewing here. There's a lot of tough rivalries going on attached to the event, one of which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, uh, Casey, your thoughts? Uh, do you remember even watching this event? I know you I watched did. it, but do you remember watching it? It's really interesting because I, I watched this event not really being an MMA fan, honestly. At that point, like – I was I was working I was working videos doing editing and shooting promos for Elite XC and honestly it was just a job I wasn't training at the time it was literally just a job but I knew UFC was obviously I mean UFC 100 was a big deal and I went to a friend's place and I do remember watching this at a friend's house and uh, and not really know who the fighters were honestly but just knowing it was Brock Lesnar and it was a big deal basically it was it was a spectacle oh this song. Myself. Yeah. I know. Why? I'm losing my mind right now. I know. This is so nostalgic. I, 
Unlike you, Mike, I did not really follow pro wrestling, but you know, I, I you could intuit just from the amount of interest and the number of people that were asking me about the event. It's one of those events where you got to get the sense of how important it is by the people who talk to you about it. And it was just, yeah. a, it was just a super huge deal. Um, you know, I, uh, I actually interviewed John Jones in the hallway of the Mandalay Bay event center after he, Jake O'Brien, because my, my, my play, I mean, while we're, while we're watching this <laughs> intro. Two pieces. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Wow, that knee bar. Jeez. God, he looks so young. He looks so young. That's oh, the, 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 the mister. The mister. Remember the the, 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 the the little water falling behind him? Yeah. They did the mister for a while, though. Yeah. They did the mister for too. And these were new graphics, I, from what I remember, right? Weren't these? Yeah. I didn't even graphics? know this one had a nickname. This was a nickname card. It's called Making History. Making. Yeah, that's what the swag was themed. Interesting. Wow. You know, so when you interviewed John, yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> when, you, when you when you when you interviewed John Stephen, like, did you get a sense of what was about to happen for this man? Did you see it? I, I think a lot of people are starting to see it a little bit, but was there sorry. a sense of this guy's going to be a star, probably going to be a world champion? Did you feel that yet? Absolutely. Like he was, he was a, a future star. Like I, I sense that from the press conference when he fought after he fought Bonner, like after he pulled off that spinning back fist, there was he had that you know an apocalypse now. Uh, he had that weird light around him. Um, you know, you just knew he was going to be uh, a big deal. One of the things that was very interesting that I remember to this day about that interview was just the fact that he asked me to shoot him from the side because he had a small cut on his ear. He did not want to shoot straight ahead. He wanted to shoot in profile because he didn't want people to see his bloody ear. And I thought, how odd for a cage fighter to be so concerned about their physical appearance after a cage fight. But this was not the last time um, I would find something that John Jones did odd. <laughs> fair, very fair. Mike Goldberg doing the play-by-play -play on this one. Joe Rogan with hair, with a hair. beard. Rocking the uh, the Joe Rogan esque black with white pinstripes that aren't straight down or sideways; they're diagonal. Uh, classic Rogan wardrobe right there. So we're getting little promos of Brock and Frank. We're seeing the knee bar. Uh, I'm very excited to watch these fights. Um, here's something that I was talking to Steven earlier on Slack, and I was doing like a little research. Some people were sending me some DMs and stuff, and there was a lot of stuff that I either completely forgot or had no idea about when it came to UFC 100. So uh, one thing I totally forgot, and Steven, I wanted to kind of get your 2009 mindset on here and see if you remember this. Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir 2. This was not supposed to be the main event of UFC 100. Did you remember this in the, oh. the UFC shifting gears here? Oh, no, I did, I did not. Um, I did not remember that. What, what was the original one? George St. Pierre versus Tiago Alves was supposed to headline, but Frank oh. Mir and Mark Lesnar were booked to fight at UFC 98. Frank Mir got injured, and then like a day or two after they announced the fight was off, they announced it as the main event of UFC 100, which is crazy to think right. about. Like, I, hate, I think it helped this card a whole hell of a lot, shifting it over to yes. UFC 100. Yep. Pretty wild. Yep, I think yeah, uh, it was one of those one of the, one of those times in UFC history where a last minute shift, you know, or a, a, a shorter notice shift actually, you know, sent the card into the stratosphere, like you know, Diaz McGregor won. For sure. Did you know that, Casey? That this no, I had no clue. The original main event. I had no clue. Uh, so well, I, I, I'm, Steve, I'm, assu I'm assuming that was good. I mean, this people were excited when they announced that Brock was going to be the main event for UFC 100. I assume. Yeah, it was. I'm sure they were. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. the actual shift. Long, long were the days that we would be getting Dana White Instagram videos announcing <laughs> fights and shifting gears. Uh, this is just, you know, different stuff where he would just come on and so they'd make announcements. Everything would it, be on the website. Was it's it crazy. fight fight week blog week? Is that what the Dana White used to be? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think this fight was week. just before that era. Yeah. Was it right before that era? Okay, yeah. fight week blog week. Yeah. Also, you I think like remember, individual fighters did blogs. Why? Uh, this is July 2009 
the okay. economy was doing horrible right now. This was actually a really bad time in American history for a lot of people. The credit crisis had just taken place. Um, my my salary had just been slashed in half. I was basically, you know, working um, at MMA Weekly for half of my salary because uh, their credit cards had been frozen uh, for the credit crisis. So I was working this, working MMA. Uh, working MMA weekly, full content fighter. Then I was in a cover band in the weekends to make extra money. And that's, you know, it was a really tough time in the economy. I think that uh, people forget that. Yeah, that's a great the, point. Absolutely great point. So the fight right before the first fight in the pay-per-view was Mark Coleman and the late Stefan Bonner. So, yeah. Right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so Mark Coleman made $100,000. I think that was one of his last gaps, got yeah. last fights in the UFC, wasn't it? There's one of them, yeah. I'll have to go back and, and cheat and look at topology, but that was definitely one of his last ones. Uh, Steven, I want to see if you remember this because someone messaged me on IG about this and I looked it up and it appears that there's some truth to this. Uh, do you remember Dana White saying something to the effect of that if UFC 100 did at least one and a half million pay-per-view buys, that he face <laughs> jump off of the Mandalay Bay? Do you remember this? I hadn't even thought about that until you mentioned it. And Casey and I probably are having the exact same reaction because that was a thing for so goddamn long. Like it was one of these stunts that he, it was in fact like one of the only stunts that he did like that. Casey, correct me if I'm wrong, but he's never done anything like that in the future. He's never done something as wacky as that. And it never was such a big line heading into this. Yeah, never like we, what he publicly talked about if we hit a certain pay-per-view sales point i'll do something i don't him yeah that's i don't recall him ever doing it again after that and he didn't do he didn't do the jump i guess right he didn't I, no no yeah he i'll he bring that up it was next. like uh it was like nina's oiling thing you know it was like one of these things where it's like he says he's gonna do it and everybody hounds him for a while and then eventually they give up they just forget yeah <laughs> Uh, we, we talked about like tough rivalries as on my screen, Alan Belcher is making his way to the cage and it's All pretty right, crazy yeah. to think that Alan Belcher is still fighting, uh, this time doing the bare knuckle stuff, just yeah. fought Junior Dos Santos for game bread bare knuckle. Two bare knuckle fighters are on this card. <laughs> yep. Tiago Alba is about to fight Mike freaking Perry. I just, I, I just crazy. saw Mr. Alves last week, you know, at, a, at the press conference. That's a wild. Man, what Steven, is... you were up in the... Yeah, this is wild. Look at these entrances. Steven, you're up in the rafters, so I don't know if you saw this. Banners. But, uh, banners. They have banners. <laughs> they have banners. They're walking up the banners. Have, this is also, crazy. Also, look at all that tin. Look at all the oh, tinfoil on the shirt. So much foil. Muscle, muscle farm everywhere. It's, I mean, it just brings this us all is great. Is this is great. It's so is that, good. Is this I'm not sure. This is back when the cut guys were sponsored. Look at the cut guys. They had sponsors all over yes. them, too. That's so funny. National it's hard Guard to get a sense of it the now shirts. because it's hard to get a sense of it now because everything's so uniform. But this was a time when a lot of people were making a lot of money on sponsorships. Like people mm -hmm. like Cutman, people like auxiliary yep. people, could make, you know, five high five figures, low six figures for just being around the cage because the UFC hadn't closed that avenue yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, co yeah, coaches and uh, coaches and cornermen also made uh, a decent a decent buck. If they if they came to a lot of fights, yep, I remember that. Apparently, wow. Stephen, and I don't know if you saw this from the Raptors, there was a near skirmish in the crowd between Rampage Jackson and Rashad Evans during the event because they were they I, I think they were they had just finished filming Tough or they're in the middle of filming their season of Tough. They were scheduled to fight, but it hadn't happened yet because I guess Rashad went on the ESPN radio shortly thereafter and said that they got into it like near Dana White, but it didn't escalate too much. Do you remember this at all? If vaguely, but not not really. I mean, obviously, you know, they were shooting the reality show and they hated each other, so it wouldn't surprise me that oh. something like that. Happened. Wait, guys, we have to hear the Oop. song. The song's about to come out. The song. I can't the song. The song. Well, oh, 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 no. oh, they, they might right. replace it. They might replace it because it's a. It's not live. Man, I would think this song would yeah, fall under no. fair use, but who knows? No, they took it out. They took out the song. We yeah, don't have access to the really song. Ah, uh, bummer. So it's like stupid metal that's playing. It's yep. it's, a, it's a weird generic, yeah, kind of rock track. Yeah. Oh, debut of, of Akiyama. 
Oh, <laughs> MMAclothing.com all over his gi, which yeah. is pretty sick. Who is it? For your new kids, Earth, man. For your new kids, this is Physical 100's Yoshihiro Akiyama. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good one. Uh, wow. This I absolutely this I absolutely didn't know, guys. Once upon a time, Limp Biscuit was going to do a pre-event party show in conjunction with the UFC the day before <laughs> UFC 100. Uh, this, and I actually found the actual press release announcing this, and it would have been the first Limp Biscuit show in the United States in eight years that featured the original band members all playing together in the United States. And then about two weeks before the event, it was canceled, and then Limp Biscuit put a statement on their website that said, uh, quote, Limp Bizkit did not in any way cancel the UFC 100 concert in Las Vegas. Truth is, UFC and Interscope Records could not come to an agreement on certain DVD rights. With all respect to Mandalay Bay, the UFC were also unhappy with Limp Bizkit's decision of wanting to switch the performance from the beach at Mandalay Bay with its inappropriate layout for a heavy rock concert with Limp Bizkit, basically a stage in front of a pool to a more standard concert venue, also located at the Mandalay Bay, which was the House of Blues. The UFC expressed they wanted a party vibe for this event, and they would not settle for any venue besides the beach for this and other reasons. So who knew? If you went to UFC 100 and you didn't know about this, you could have got a historic Limp Biscuit show the day before UFC 100. But it, alas, it didn't come to fruition. You know, it's, it's funny, on the, on the replay, you hear the generic rock track, but you can also kind of hear Akiyama's original music. So it just sounds like a really <laughs> bad remix, like a rock remix of it. It's just, yeah. It's <laughs> Carluno. Carluno behind him. Okay. Carluno, yeah. Oh, Carluno, yeah. Uh, yeah. A Shogun in there as well with the, yeah, uh, the eyeball shirts, the bad boy shirts. Oh, that, that's one of Jonathan. Uh, that's one of GSP guys, Jonathan something. Yeah, uh, I reckon I can remember. I've, yeah. Uh, Chamberlain. No, no, no. Chamberlain. Yeah. Jonathan Chamberlain. Yeah. Yeah. He was he yes. was he was like the original oh. Mike Dolce kind of like the kind of the one of the first nutrition <laughs> nutrition right. guys in the sport. Wow, I haven't thought of him in a while. Oh my goodness! It's, see, this is why we do this. This yeah. is why we do this, guys. Akiyama is in the octagon. We're ready to go. Here comes a banner. We're gonna get an unfolded look, banner. Uh, there it is. Uh, this is unbelievable. Look at all, all those sponsors. <laughs> look at yeah. these guys. We have a tale of the tape. Mm. Akiyama was 33 making his UFC debut. Alan Belcher just 25 at middleweight. Belcher 6'2. Akiyama 5'10 reaches exactly the same. Both men made weight like professionals. And now freaking Alan Belcher is a heavyweight fighting in bare knuckles. Wow. Look at the buff man wearing just a very non buffer like tuxedo. No real <laughs> pizzazz to it at all. This is a, it's like he's. You know, be a best man at a wedding in 2009. Pretty He's wild. More I see the, yes, a little bit of, a little bit of pep. Looks way younger. Look at Alan, Alan Belcher. Looks like he's freaking 19 compared to what he looks Is like. He, they say uh, 25, 25 in this one. It's so. crazy, dude. I got to say, I think Alan Belcher has an older looking face. Yeah. Like to me, he doesn't look like he's 25. He looks like he's 30. This is actually a bit, a sub, this is a subdued Bruce Buffer, to be honest. Like, for to open the pay per view, that was kind of, I didn't, I didn't think that was like he's much bigger now. I think this is. Doesn't he do the buffer three? Is this this is the buffer three hundred and sixty card? Is it not where he like rips his ankle to shreds? Introducing Did that happened in this, this card. I don't think. Was it this one? All right. No, uh, I think he blew his knee out um, at a at an event before right. you. Not. It was before this. Okay. Uh, All right, starting the clock. So, okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pause mine for a second. Three, two, yeah. one. Okay, now we're all caught up. All Here right. we go. First fight of the main card underway. We had Alan Belcher versus Akiyama. The canvas just filled with Whose blood. Whose blood is Ariyama that? Saki. Whose Ariyama blood is that? Saki. Yeah. Whose blood is That's that? What question. fight? What fight? What, what fight was that? Jeez. No idea. That was a mess. <laughs> Jim Miller was in a lot of bloody fights back then, so it could have been him. Maybe our peeps would know. By the way, we do have the Super Chat feature as well, so if you guys want to yeah. chime in at any point, uh, we'll check you right on the screen. We'll answer some questions in between fights. Uh, but here, we're getting after it here. Akiyama, the, ooh, a little left hand, sneaky from Akiyama. Mm, it's energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
Synthesis mm. six in the middle. I remember. I remember yeah. those energy drinks. Those are pretty good. Harley Davidson, Zions. All yeah, BSN or was. Ooh, good head kick. Ouch. Oh. Oh, we got a ding ding kick. Ding ding. Oh, we gotta stop the clock. We got a ding ding kick. Stop the clock. Belcher. Oh, Akiyama's down. He's hurting. that. That's criminal. You can. Uh, that's. Let's see this. Let's see this replay. Oi. Ooh. Ooh, that's about three toes all up mm. in there. And he is down. I'm sure a point will not be taken. Probably won't get an official warning. Some things never change. The iconic voice is here with yeah. the iconic <laughs> wave emoji. Hey. Nice to see you, Aster. And let's see another. Re Ooh, yeah. That one did it. Ooh, <laughs> and he goes down at a heap. Yamasaki. I mean, the speed of Yamasaki. I don't know why anybody had a problem with his refereeing style, but he got in there real quick. He was just at the top of the game. <laughs> Spiky hair. Ready to go. Alan Belcher just fired up. Akiyama saying, right. yeah, Mario, get out of the way. I'm ready to go. And here we have it. All We're right. back at it. All right, clock's right on. Cool. Yep. I could be I could be a used nice keeper. Hand from you could. I, I think could. you have your calling, Casey. You right have your there. calling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun watching, going back and watching these. Like the game has evolved so much in the last 15 years. Oh, these guys just chucking them now. Hey. Oh, this is fun. They're cracking each other. So what was, the line, what was the line coming into this fight? Do you, do, does anyone know? Does anyone remember? The was betting it? lines? Or like who, like kind of, like, what was the storyline as far as kind of coming into this? At least with Belcher, at least. Was he, I like, don't just a remember at all. Yeah. I think the storyline was more about Akiyama coming over and making his yeah. debut. Uh, that was a that was a pretty big deal because he was in um, was in K One Heroes before he came over in Dream. Uh, K One, yeah, it was a, yeah, he was in, yeah, definitely Dream. Um, yeah, K One Heroes, yeah. He was yeah. a big star. He's always oh, been big, a big star. Yeah, be, yeah, for sure. His I fights think, um, with uh, oh, what was his name? Oh, I can't remember his name, but there was amazing fights in Dream. One of the few fighters that can go on a four-fight losing streak and still remain on the roster. Oh! Drops Damn, Akiyama. Belcher. How dare you. Oh! These guys are getting after it. What were you saying, Steven? I wonder if this is before or after Alan Belcher submitted, submitted Palhares. Let's see here. I think it was before. This was early in his career. That's when Alan Belcher kind of broke through for me. Probably because I just disliked yeah. Palhares and his, his <laughs> leg locks. And his wackiness. <laughs> okay. Oh, so the Palhares victory was before this. That, that kind of got him this fight. Is that what you're saying? I think so. It, yeah. That it, it feels like he kind of broke through in his momentum as a middleweight at that point. And I think based partially on the strength of that, he got this fight. Ooh. Ooh. Little high kick right hand combo from Sexy Yama. That was nice. So, why the full so, event is available on the UFC channel. Uh, there you go. The UFC, uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. So if anyone's looking for it, uh, feel free to yeah, listen to us and watch it on the YouTube UFC YouTube channel. Or you can go back and watch prelim fights as well. Oh yeah, on that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is this is two thousand nine MMA, baby. It's Just amazing. winging them. It really is. So I've obviously I've only been to Vegas one time. Uh, it was to cover UFC two seventy six, headlined by the memorable, iconic fight of the decade nominee Israel Adesanya versus Jared Cannonier. Uh, obviously, a kid. So obviously, I, I've never been inside the Mandalay Bay Event Center, Stephen. Oh. I hear it is a great place. And you obviously, Casey, have been there mm -hmm. as well. There is a great place to watch fights, and it's kind of surprising the UFC doesn't really go back there, even with some of the smaller cards just going in there. Yeah, um, yeah. It, back then, it, it, usually the pay per view is a big event split between Mandalay Bay and MGM Grand. Personally, I like the MGM Grand a bit better, but they were kind of the same essentially. 
Basically, there yeah. wasn't a bad seed in there. All right, end of the first round. First round's over. Okay. And we can't even yeah, judge yeah, fights I, the way we, we do now because it was a whole <laughs> different scoring criteria. Yeah. Aggression, effectiveness, right. and optimal uh, control. Ooh. Back back, back then, a takedown would win you the round. Yep. Yeah. Well, Akiyama probably got it. Even though Belcher dropped him. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> he goes head first right into the fence. What a great. It's crazy. Right. We got Dan Henderson, Michael Bisbing coming up next, ladies and gentlemen. One of the more iconic moments in UFC history goes down in that one. So if you don't know what happened, I'm sure you do. Uh, stay tuned. We Rich will Clemente. all react to it together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Rich Good Clemente. Call. Yeah. Good old Rich. Oh, Duke Rufus. Okay. Oh, oh Duke's. Oh, yeah. Duke's not him. Wow. God, he looks so young. He does. I'm trying to see if I like recognize anybody else in the crowd. I recognize mm -hmm. Kevin Ioli and Dan Wetzel uh, sitting next to each other. Kevin Ioli, of course, is Kevin Ioli. Dan Wetzel is one of the most <laughs> talented writers that I've ever read um, on Yahoo. Uh, just a veteran sports writer. I had no idea what, who he was back then until I started reading. Ooh, lost your audio, Stephen. Oh, I was just oh, saying. Oh, oh, uh, it was... oh, never mind. You got your back. Sorry. Okay. Uh -oh. We got a takedown from Akiyama immediately. Belcher will scramble. Oh, oh leg lock. Uh, oh, leg Akiyama lock. gets out of there. Akiyama jumping, getting right in there. Oh, now he's inside control. Inside control. And trying to crucifix him. Whoa, this is a camera angle we never see anymore. I know. You see this is a great a, angle, too. UC never goes to this angle. Not during the fight. They might go to replays of this angle, but I've never seen him go live. Like, this is it's weird. Yeah, it's like on a... This is a different angle. Okay. That was... I'm, 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 I'm kind of watching for different camera angles, how the UFC's production has evolved. Uh, so it's, this, is, this is very interesting to me. Just from yeah. that, just that point of view. A lot of scrambles here. It looked like at one point Akiyama wanted to knee Alan Belcher in the face while he had him nearly in crucifix. Yeah. And I think he, I think he was about to land it, but then kind of grazed him a little bit and then realized, oh, I can't do this here. Sorry. Belcher just on his back. Akiyama posturing <laughs> up, takes a deep breath and lands a right hand. This fight is exactly as I remember it. Remember that old move, the old like like lean back, look away, and then fire the overhand right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, who, who ah, Michael that? Clark Duncan. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Good call on that one. Ooh. Oh, okay, so I'm pointing out two, oh. two only only two commentators. Um, UFC. This is before they they did three every once in a while. I think with Randy, right? But mm -hmm. for the most part, it was usually just Goldie and Rogan. And yep. um, but now, now, we, now we have three as just a, a normal for every event. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people miss Mike Goldberg. Um, I think he was perfect for this time frame, though. I mean, I think you know, Anik kind of encapsulates yeah. sort of the modern era of the UFC. Yeah. But it's funny, like I, I was going back because we're doing, obviously we're doing another one of these next week for 200. And I was like, oh yeah, John Anik was on the call for that one, I'm sure. He wasn't. Goldberg, it was Goldberg and Rogan for that one. So this will be Anik's first 100 event that he'll ever call. UFC 300 will be his first uh, centennial pay-per-view card. Which wait, is wait, cool. I'm sorry, yeah. would you say Gold, Goldie was doing the 200? Is that what you said? Yeah. What? Oh, I didn't. Wow. I, that, 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 okay, that one kind of shocked me. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, really. I didn't know either. I thought for sure it was Anik, and then I went on Topology, and it said it was Goldberg mm -hmm. and Rogan. And I was like, it must be true. Ooh. Under Ooh, that was a nice little uppercut right there. That was just tougher than a $2 steak. He's just battered, taking deep breaths, but still on his feet, bouncing around, still throwing jabs, still has that tattoo on his arm that is incredible. Man, Akiyama looks – he's such an Ooh. undersized middleweight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah, I think eventually he went down to 170, right, in the UFC? Akiyama, yeah. Uh, did he? I felt like yeah, he, he did. Down, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. He, he, ooh. The Jake Shields yeah. fight, he went down yeah, to 170 before, yeah. and I think he might have stayed there. 
So you ended up at 170, yeah. I mean, when Vitor, I mean, when you're fighting Vitor Belfort, <laughs> you probably know you have to. You know your middleweight days might be numbered. Also remember that this was the time of fight night testing. <laughs> oh, oh touche. Touche. This is long before out of competition testing and way before USADA. <laughs> we're doing the uh He's, You were you were on the Lesnar. You were on the Brock Lesnar dam, Steven, right? Did you do that one with us? The damn they were good? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With Shaheen and Jed. Shaheen, yeah. you know, Shaheen talked about Brock, especially when he was covering 200, that Brock just has this, like, when he walks in a room, I mean, he's obviously a giant dude. It's just like the room stops, and you just have to, it just gets quiet. It's just an aura about him that is sort of unexplainable. Was it like that at 100 as well? Like when he walked into a media room or something like that? Was, was it just dead silence and the room just stopped? 100%. He's, uh, you're like, how is a guy that big? How is a guy, how is a guy built that way? That's the first thought that you have. Then the second thought you have is, my, he looks angry. Um, <laughs> he did a backstage scrum <laughs> and um, getting anything out of that guy uh, was very difficult. He just didn't, you know, he, <laughs> if you got him in a good mood, he opened right up. But um, I was actually watching the press conference and he was like, you know, Dan, even Dan was like, he's a cranky guy on fight week. Yes, he's a cranky guy on fight week. He did not want to talk. He was very much um, not media friendly um, until after the press conference when he, you know, did his thing and had the whip the dog session. So he had to apologize I apologize that he he likes all beer equally. <laughs> for yeah, his uh, his Coors Light comments. Yes. What a wild Round time! Three. That was that was that was the controversy. <laughs> oh, that's right. This, this is the lady from uh, the play. This is a uh, Holly from Holly Madison. One his, uh, oh, Logan. Uh, two two wives. One of his two wives. Half's two wives. Hughes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Or was it three someone wives? Had I can't remember. Someone had sent me something earlier that a she was I don't know if she was there because of this, but one of the assigned ring card girls ended up getting fired that week because she was hung over before like a Friday event. Edith was, something. Was that this event? Edith LaBelle. Edith, Edith LaBelle. LaBelle. And I, I looked God, some I things up and that. I thought I saw something. Um yeah. she obviously let me see if the, let me see. I just want to make sure I have this right. But somebody did send me about this. Oh, I can't. Look, okay, yeah, I can't. Look, he looks tired. Yeah, it now. was before UFC 100. LaBelle spoke to you at AOL Fun House, AOL Fan House, which I believe was uh, was, was it, us yeah. back in the day. It was us, yeah. <laughs> From the organization following UFC 100 and the Canadian Ooh, body shot. food poisoning played a major role in the series of events. Um, Yes, yeah, so she got food poisoning, but it seemed uh, the UFC had s sort of a different take on it. But yeah, she was like late for an event and she got canned. Huh. Wild. Those are, those be the days. Those be the days. Oh, was, Akiyama was just so tough. He was, you know, <laughs> a, a tough fighter. You know, not the most skilled. He could get, you know, you could out technique him. He was just a dog, and he would continue to yeah. fight and in the fight not the greatest technique and got sort of outworked by a lot of folks in the octagon yeah. from what I, mean. I, I remember the chris lieben fight that's the one that i that, that comes yeah. to my mind when, yeah but you know, was, that seems to be almost every japanese judo fighter just like just tough like all these judo fighters just incredibly tough yeah that, I, so I, I, he looks like a, yeah he looks like a lightweight in there with alan belcher it's crazy yeah he yeah he's mm -hmm. he's he, he's 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 his walking around weight is middleweight. Yeah. His face is just like a mess. He can't even open one of his eyes. Just trying. Belcher just thumping him with leg kicks yeah. over and over again. I have a tied 1-1, one, one, but Belcher definitely has the momentum right now, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, I think Akiyama won two for sure. Yeah. And then I, I get Belcher one, he could have won because... Yeah, but one, Akiyama still could have won because he did get a takedown. And maybe, the maybe, yeah. 
Can I just say that the overall level of striking doesn't seem as slick as it does now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peyton Talbot Casey, was Casey, uh, not walking. Casey, do you feel me? Yeah, Ooh. Casey, do you feel me on Ooh. Peyton Talbot? Any of the, you know, these examples of kids who grew up with MMA, even though Peyton didn't necessarily, but um, it just feels like the, the, the game, the striking game has evolved a lot. I mean, everything's evolved, but I just, I think there was just a bit of more like, I don't know, like, this feels like a fight, though. I mean, this isn't, they're, they're, you know what I mean? Like, there's something about, like, higher technicians fighting or higher technicians competing, but this feels like a fight, which I think that's why yeah. everyone liked Akiyama, because... And obviously, he's just incredibly handsome. Let's just talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good getting yeah. off the bus. <laughs> I mean, yes, these these guys are slugging it out, and it's a great fight. I, um, Ooh, the yeah. head doesn't feel like it's really there. Head, head, well, we all know head movements. Head movement is for cowards. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, that's what? <laughs> oh, <there we> <laughs> nice. Yeah. That was great. Speaking of evolution. <laughs> There you go. This is awesome. Akiyama, call him for some, you know, no, no, not, no, not getting no. overly like, let's go, let's go, but just a little, a little one, a little, come on, let's make, make a little noise up in here. Final 70 seconds. Crowd is into it for sure. This crowd is electric. Oh, oh, oh. oh Damn. I forgot about that much off the fence. That was nice. Oh, Akiyama's so freaking tough, dude. He's just eating these leg kicks and firing back. What's up oh. with this? What's up with this short? What's up with his left short? Belcher's left short. Why is it hiked up and staying ah. there? He it's tucked it. It looks like that. he tucked it like into his thing. his underwear or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, he tried the oh, juice spinning back. Yeah. Hey, oh, and there's the takedown. Side Ooh. control. In 2009, that wins you the round. <laughs> oh, good escape. good escape. Good escape. Ooh, good escape. Alan Belcher. Dude is so tough. This fight right. was uh, was a perfect main card opener, I think. It, it was. was. Like perfect, uh, this, oh, this, this is awesome. of the whistle. Just scrapping. All right, that's fight. That's it. I scored it. I score rounds. Wait. Did we, we get for rounds one and three for Belcher? I would have had one and three for Belcher. Probably two I've, and th I mean, I'm, if this was today's scoring, Belcher wins this fight. I think. Oh, there's the replay of the Superman punch. Yeah, I mean, today's scoring, I think Belcher wins this fight. But 2009 scoring okay. where effectiveness and the octagon control bs that doesn't exist anymore uh, <laughs> the octa octagon, octagon, octagon control really. which means octagon nothing. control uh, the rules of the rules of the octagon that was a good scrap good scrap first time i've watched that one in 15 years almost good stuff look at the lettuce on alan belcher's head it's crazy to to look back on these days michael bisbing walking uh -huh. out to fight dan henderson is gonna be wild an eye poke ended uh, Belcher's career, didn't it? Or a detached retina? Did it? Really? I don't remember that. I think that. it was an eye injury. eye injury. And then, you know, of course, we've got Bisming, uh, you know, coming up who had his, uh, his own eye, eye issues. Speaking of eye injuries, Akiyama is showing the effects of his eye. And the buff man reading off the decision here. Silver Star. Oh. oh. Splitty? Yeah. Yeah. 3027 Akiyama 2927. 3027? Ugh. Wow. Oh, wow. Akiyama wins. Splitty wow. City. Wow. Successful debut. I you are, don't you're, agree. Nah, I don't agree with that. Don't agree with that. And I mm. love Akiyama. I do not agree with that. I think uh, Belcher. Oh, Rogan, Ro 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 Rogan saying on the broadcast that Belcher got robbed. Yeah, Belcher 30, landed more quality strikes. Yeah, thirty twenty seven on one of the cards for Akiyama. I don't really 30, see that. Even wow. 
27, 28, 29, 29, 28. Well, clearly, clearly the, the magnificent walkout and his good looks really swayed the judges. And that's, and that's, that's prize fighting, baby. That's prize fighting. Yes, but the good news is uh, for Alan Belcher that he may have lost the fight, but he, do- he won the night because that was the fight of the night, and he got $100,000 oh. for that performance despite losing. So there you go. All the so fighters this- who got bonuses got 100000 this was back in the day when you could just walk into the event center after the event. I mean, that's how, you know, it, it's just a totally different setup back then. Totally different level of scrutiny. Oh, there's his dad. Uh, there's there's Mir's dad. Um, totally God, different level of totally different level of scru- uh, security. You know, t- attention to detail. You could just walk back there, walk right into the media room, or even saunter accidentally into the you know dressing room. Different, different times. Uh, guys, it's about that time for Dan Henderson versus Michael All Bisping. Right. Even Esther agrees is a bad score, but I think yeah. we're going to be joined by another special guest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have... I don't know if he's standing by or not. Uh, I'm waiting for him. I could reach out. Yeah. If you have it already. I'm waiting for him to log in. I think what I have to say know. about this fight is yeah. uh, y'all want to see a dead body? Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler, Steven. Spoiler. Don't I don't no even one has care. ever don't seen even no one has ever seen this knockout ever. Nobody. <laughs> it's not a it's not a logo of, of one of the fighters. None of that. God, I remember how, like how like I wasn't even like a huge fan at the time. But I just remember how much of a big deal it was when Dan Henderson came to the UFC. Like it was such a big deal around, like around this time. He had, he had just defeated Vanderlei, right? In Pride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And remember, Hen- Hendo versus Jackson was for the uh, for, for both belts. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Stephen, thank yes. you very much, and we are gonna okay. swap you out. Yes. Okay, I'm being Thank swapped. you, my man. Peace out. Appreciate you. Steve Morocco, boots on the ground at UFC 100. What a time, indeed. Uh, he's and up in the Raptors. Look who we and got. Look, look at who we got. This. Look at this guy. Ooh. Mr. Ooh, no the gray darkness area. has come for one side of my face. Yeah, yes, I like it. Okay. Harvey, De- Harvey Dent right now. How does this, it's how, how very we doing, two Dad? faced right now? Great. Uh, how's UFC 100 going? I'm excited to find out what happens in this wondrous event. Yes, uh, we just watched the fight of the night from this event, which was Akiyama versus Alan Belcher. Uh, both fighters got $100,000, Jed, for their performance wow. in, back in 2009. How about that? Feeling generous. Uh, and, you know, why not? I honestly can't remember a single thing about that fight. So oh, was it good? This being Akiyama? It was very good. I mean, it's not Biz Bianchi. I'm a, uh, I can't remember. It's definitely not Biz Bianchi. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't it's remember a single thing no, about Akiyama. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let's focus. Look, look at Biz Bianchi walk out. Look how tough he looks. Look at this. Look at oh him. my God, dude. He looks like he's 17 years old. What a dude, tough young B- man. Biz Bianchi was, he, his personality post retirement or even toward the end of his career was completely different. He was, I don't know if people interviewed him. I don't know if you remember him in interviews early in his UFC run like this. He was a jerk. He was just like not fun to be around. Like, um, yeah, dude. He was. Um, he's definitely someone that uh, as he matured and got older, kind of relaxed a bit in life. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason people hated him. There's a reason he was a yeah. heel. He's he was. Yeah, he, he was. He was hated in New England, dude. Mm-hmm. Everybody hated him because uh, the Jorge Rivera fight. Yeah, and everything that happened there. Everybody friggin' hated this guy. It's just his um, interviews. He was just super abrasive and not. He had no sense of humor like he does now. Like it's 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 really one of the more remarkable kind of one eighties as far as like fa- uh, fan acceptance. You know, like just yeah. And it wasn't based on his actual fights. It was based on him just what who he was outside the cage. Just yeah, and just I mean his one eighty just happened because he hung around forever. Mm-hmm. If you're just around forever, eventually people start to like you. You know. <laughs> It helps, yeah. Just there he is. See, oh, but seriously, like, who doing. can you think of one example of an MMA fighter who's been around like in a prominent position for ten years, and just everyone's like, yeah, whatever, who cares? We or or that you hate him, 
you just longevity builds a lot of goodwill in this sport. It's not a bad point. Yeah, I mean, look dude, at, like look at Jim look Miller, at and I love Jim Miller. Jim Miller's great, but like. If Jim Miller had retired after 200, like he had talked about doing, no one would have cared. You would be like, right. okay, he was a fun fighter, a guy we would, some of us, we would have done a damn on him and been like, hey, I feel like he's a forgotten Jim. But he just hung around, and that's it. That's <laughs> half the battle. He just kept being on our in our lives three times Doge, a year. First signing, Doce Diet. I see Mike Doce Diet. Oh, Doce yes. Diet logo. Oh. Great call. Uh, Jed, Damn, we, we talked to Steven, we talked to Steven about this. He was obviously covering this event and talked about some of the things that happened. Uh, we talked to Casey about his memories of July 11, 2009. Do you remember watching this event? Did you watch it live? If so, what are your memories of watching this event live? <sighs> that is a good question. And if I was a smarter podcaster, I would have thought about something at all before just hopping <laughs> on. It's been like, oh, but I didn't. I didn't know prep. I was just like, ah, let's watch UFC 100. So this was 2009, right? Yes. So 2009, I was in college. Um, in July would have been the summers. So I would have been, that would have been my summer of my junior year. Uh, I definitely watched this. I don't remember if I watched it live. I would assume that I did, though probably not. Actually, no, because it's UFC 100, I almost certainly watched this at a uh, place called B&D Burgers um, in Savannah, cool. Georgia, which uh, is not a particularly great restaurant or whatever, but they used to put a lot of the UFCs on. Um, and so, like... I, Every once in a while, wild like Buffalo Wild Wings, B Dubs would do it, um, but B and D Burgers usually had it in Savannah, and so this was in the summer of my junior year of college. So I was almost certainly home because I can't think of what else, and so I had to have been, I had to have gone and watched it there. But honestly, nothing really jumps out of the evening watching it. Not in the way that two hundred really stands out in my mind. Yeah, yeah, because I was, I, I remember. Like I was a fan, but I wasn't watching everything back then. But mm -hmm. when this rolled around, Brock was announced. Like Brock ended up being the main event because we, we discovered like that wasn't the in the even the original main event for UFC 100. Uh, the fight was supposed to take place at UFC 98, and then Frank Mir got hurt, <laughs> so they bumped <laughs> this one. Um, I missed I missed this song. The who ha who ha oh. who ha who ha who ha who ha. The tail of tape. <laughs> Dan Hendo, 38. eight years older than Michael Bisbing. Bisbing's got an inch and a half reach. And Buff Man just looks so young. Everyone just looks so young. It's I think that's like the biggest thing that sort of stands out about this is just going back and seeing Bisbing looking like a like a teenager. 1801. Ooh, Very impressive record. Yep. Also, bear, bear with me a moment. I'm going to fix the lighting so I stop looking like Two Face. No, 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 no. I can no, still hear you. No, no. This I, is, I like it. No, no. Don't what change your lighting, lighting would have been like in 2009, Jed. This yeah. Oh, no. In 2009, I was in, I was, like I said, in B&D or B&D. So it was much worse lighting than this. Um, eating oh, a God. trashy burger and <laughs> watching. Uh, I just don't remember if this card felt as big at the time. I've been thinking about that a lot because even right retroactively, it still is a pretty good card on paper. Like even thinking back to like relative positioning of these names and certainly UFC 100, they were trying to make this something major and it, and it ended up being that, but I'm just trying to think if this felt like the same way I feel about 300 now, you know? I yeah, think it, I mean, I don't remember. I, I, I think remember it was. Being just I think it was. Thing. Yeah, I think I think it was. Maybe. I know that it was a big deal. And, yeah, I'm, and one hundred's big, but like I, so I'm coming not from a broader thing, more to the hipster forum kid thing, where it's like, obviously, this was going to be very popular. It's UFC one hundred and Brock Lesnar's in the main event, and GSP Tiago Alves is a good fight, but like. I was trying to think to what extent the, you know, sure dog forums were hell. Yeah. Tom Lawler, CB yeah. Dalloway. Let's go. You know? Well, yeah, I, I think the main card, well, at least the, the main well, card is certainly good because John Fitch was still, people believed in John Fitch mm -hmm. at the time. Um, you know, he was 
he had just lost to, to GSP, but we're still like, oh, he's really good. And Paul Tiago's kind of fun. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> there's. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need to I need to sync up my time with y'all. So we're at uh, yeah. we, it's it's the I, clock I on the, here. I see the yeah. counter. Yeah, these dudes are just mm-hmm. chucking them. Uh, they're throwing heaters at each other, and that's just about it. And it's great. Bisping's actually moving around pretty well. He's landing shots. Mm-hmm. He's countering nice. Henderson's just throwing. Henderson has a game plan. Everything. Yeah. What, what's that game plan, Casey? What do you think <laughs> that game plan is for old, oh. old Danny Hendo? <laughs> if you're watching, you know his game plan because he's done the same thing every time. He's just oh. winging that right hand. Oh, Bisping is stumbling. Okay. He's going backwards. Bisping with a body oh. kick. And just unloading shots. Bisping was tough as shit. Dude, Bisping it, was. Dan Henderson, like, it's just a little, little flippy hook and then overhand. <laughs> It's it's oh, yeah. insane. He must. I think well, he's, he's thrown just fire in the right. He must throw. I think twenty overhands already in the first minute and a half. He's landed a whole bunch hey, of them. He's been look, he knows. He knows where the bread is buttered, Casey, and he's he's go. <laughs> he's doing what works. I mean, he almost beat Michael Bisping doing this exact same thing. The second however time, however many years later, when they yeah. were ancient. <laughs> I was there. I think I scored that fight oh, for Henderson were. on principle. I had it. I had actually I had scored it a draw. I, did on I actually had scored it a draw. I remember. Because I think there was a 10 8 in there. I can't remember what round, but. I think I, think I gave him a 10 7 for the first round where he had him killed like four times. <laughs> and then on the principle of almost losing to 50 year old Dan Henderson, you should not get to keep your fraudulent belt. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, you know what's fun about this? Mate? Obviously, I know I know how this ends, but I don't remember when it ends. So this is I'm very oh, um, yeah. I don't remember when it ends. So I'm I'm. There's a real possibility that this is the fight I've seen the most in my life. Oh, I've only I've, I've watched I've, this fight a lot. I think the actual end, answer or, is oh, from beginning to end. Oh, I think okay. the actual answer is Habib Connor. Um, I've seen that fight. 50 times probably I, I, i've seen oh, that fight oh, so many oh times. i thought that was the show. i thought that was it man like bismuth just got out of the way of that one it's like watching a horror movie now like we know someone's about to get slashed yeah, yeah. waiting for it's, him to jump out of the closet it's just delightful it's, this is like this is like one of those tiktok videos and the, the caption just says wait for it wait for it wait to the end <laughs> well so that's the thing we're waiting until the next round so you oh, we are on pins and needles. Yeah, See, it's I just like, like, oh, spoiler, spoiler. Oh, geez. All right. All right. Spoiler. All right. Spoiler. All right. All right. All right. I, we I, can. I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I, I couldn't remember. It I, could tried, any... I tried to avoid like all the results because I know how this fight ends, but I don't like you said, I didn't remember when I thought for sure. I always thought it was the first round for some reason. So I guess the unless judge is playing us and That'd now we're like, <laughs> it could be just, <laughs> just mix it up on you. This is just. Also, this is just the worst possible way to fight Dan Henderson. Michael Bisping has has brought to the table today. Oh yeah. What, yeah. If, what if I just back up constantly and allow his right hand to just swing freely? What if I do nothing to stop it ever? Yeah, he's just been just basically a, like popping in and out. He is landing a whole bunch of shots in this fight. He is. Um at, at this point in time, it had been fairly well established that Dan Henderson was not a man you were going to hurt, particularly with punches. So uh, this really screamed to me. It's like, oh, you just you didn't think about this at all. You were just you just went in there to fist fight a dude. Mario Masaki saw some fence grabs and immediately jumped in and was like. Stop grabbing the fence. Stop grabbing the fence. What is that? Oh, what, what was that shot? That. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. I that was that. the worst <laughs> shot I've ever seen. That was so yeah. awesome. I don't remember that. Sheesh. Final 10 seconds. Ooh, good body kick from Michael Bisping. He looked a lot better. Oh. Than I, oh. I was just about to say, Bisping looked a lot better than I thought he did in this fight. Yeah. Um. And then he got hit real, real hard at the end of the round yeah. by Dan Henderson. Fun. You, it was a pretty fun. That was round. a good. That was a good. He looked okay. It was a fun round. I thought Bisping looked terrible at it. I mean, the strategy wasn't it's wasn't bad, right. It's a bad plan. It's a bad plan. But he did land a lot of shots. He he did get hit by some of those big right hands, but by Dan. But he avoided 
a fair amount of them. I wonder what the UFC stats on this fight looks like. Let me see no if clue. that was if that was even a thing back then. Uh, I think. Ooh, let's see, UFC 100. Yeah, Dan Henderson wasn't oh. landing a lot. Uh, Dan Henderson landed. Actually, Brandon both. QFG Land is absolutely anything. correct because uh, you could just see the sheer terror in his eyes. Hey, Sean Sullivan. Dan Henderson. Keep, keep believing. 16. Keep believing. <laughs> Uh, Dan Henderson was 16 of 57 in round one. And Michael Bisbing was 11 of 67. So maybe I was, maybe I'm just not seeing things correctly. I thought Bisbing hit him a lot more than 11 times, but here we go. Round two. A few seconds behind, but who's who's going to take Michael Bisbing with the live, with the live betting odds here. Let's see if you got it in you. I'm not interested. No betting odds. No, 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 no DraftKings. Nothing yeah. on the, back then. Man, can't, 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 can't remember those times. It's a different sport. Different sports yeah. landscape. There's there's only two hundred logos in the cage rather than six thousand now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of blood in the cage, though. Yeah, we don't know what fight yeah. that was from. We're trying. We were trying to figure out what fight that was from. It was something on the prelims, but yeah. I, I mean, remember. Jim Miller is fighting, so it could have been him. I don't remember what the prelims of that look like. Uh, Mark Coleman versus Bonner. No, that fight, I don't believe that fight had any blood, but I think that fight was awful. My recollection no, is that Mark Coleman just took him down a bunch. Yeah. Dong Hyung Kim, TJ Grant. Jim Miller, Mac Danzig seems like that could be a bloody that fight. Very oh, that was a hard hit. You can see Biz the. What, what is Bisbing's game Dude, plan? How here? how am I getting off sync with you? We're at. I'm at. I'm at three thirty six. Oh. Yeah. I'm. I, yeah. I'm, I'm. I've got the timer going, and I have synced with it multiple times, and I don't touch it, and then I'm just off sync with you again. All right, I started. <laughs> which at I don't back. understand how that happens. I'm just waiting for the moment now. I can't even really call any of the action. No, no will I. It's coming. Waiting for it. Here we go. Spoilers. 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 Uh, don't go for a smoke break right now. Yes. Well, I guess if, if you smoke quickly, go right now. <sighs> if you have a one, yeah. If it's just a one dapper, go ahead. Yeah. You do an Where's outside leg kick. <laughs> Those leg kicks. A little sneaky left hand from Dan Henderson. Ooh. Oh my god! I'm just oh. So, so just, was it was, just the what, James Braddock of MMA? Just never going to use a left hand at all. Was was there was there a rivalry coming into this, or what was the story coming into this? Oh yeah, I can't. Uh, this thing was just they were an tough annoying coaches. ass. Just annoying. Okay, just annoying him. Yeah, and they were on tough together. As oh, coaches. tough. Okay, it was tough. Okay, yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. And Bisping was just being Bisping before Bisping became the beloved annoying ass. He was just because that's the thing. It really is uh, hard to be uh, as a, as a man um, who annoys many people. It <laughs> I, I understand that it's reasonable to be oui. annoyed by me or by a human who has this level of arrogance without <laughs> accomplishing shit. <laughs> and that was really the Bisping story for a lot of his career. Yeah. I did like a deep dive on his his resume. I was like, they were so clearly trying to set him up to win a title fight or just to get to a title ah! fight a decade, and he just oh, never could. How am I so far behind you? It's the, it's the best. God, punch. it's the best punch in the history of the sport. It's it's that or the Francis uppercut. It's those are the oh, one. Two. So, <laughs> I've seen that knockout so many times. It's. Like watching it in the context of the whole entire fight oh. is freaking wild. It brings me back. Bisping, Gosh, you should probably not Michael circle Bisping out and right towards towards the big power hand. I mean, it worked for super it worked not, for a round and a half. <laughs> you should super not do that with your hands down. It's bad. It's a bad plan. <sighs> wow. I remember. I, I remember reacting <laughs> to the knockout. Best. And then I remember the replay playing and we saw like how thunderous the follow-up shot was on the replay. The dive bomb. Just, it, 
whole different yeah it was just like i think it was there here comes replay i'm watching the replay right now oh nothing i honestly don't know if anything in mma will make me as happy as hindo turning the dive bomb into his logo yeah. Like the level of petty awesome there is unmatched in this Bam. sport. The inside I mean, like it the- is it is oh. a full dive bomb. Like he jumps down. It's awesome. Has anyone done that yet after this to that no. level of violence? I don't Oh it's, <laughs> it's so brutal. So <laughs> it's so brutal. God, oh, God, it's so fun because I hated Bisping. God, that was satisfying. I still don't really like him, and so that was satisfying. I'll never get tired of watching that one. That's freaking crazy. Uh, <laughs> all these years, I love go. You sure Goldie? Goldie's like, ah, Bisping's fine. What a class act. I'm like, how do you know, Goldie? I mean, he's up. He's yeah. up. That's he's fine. I think he's gonna be okay. Oh, I shout out to that! Shout this. out to that tap out shirt. Shout out for the tap out shirt. Man, it's got everything on it. And Zions, simpler time. Look, Maddie Lindland. Michael, right, Michael Bisbing speaking to. Uh, now our own Damon Martin in 2014. Actually, this is a uh, BT Sport. Uh, this is what he said in 2014. I fought Dan Henderson in 2009, and I lost, and that was at UFC 100. UFC 100 is the biggest pay-per-view in the company he's ever done. 1.6 million pay-per-view buys watched all over the world. And, of course, I got knocked out cold after talking lots of smack leading up to the fight. So I got my just desserts in that one. And then says, and I quote, after the fight, I don't remember anything. I remember being yeah. in the showers didn't have a clue what was going on. I was saying to my manager at the time, I can't be knocked out because I'm not fighting for another two months. What the hell are you talking about? Wow. And then these people come and say, Michael, we need to take you to the hospital. I'm like, I'm not going to the hospital. And then I'd say again, what's going on? I would just keep repeating myself. So he he was knocked out so badly. He didn't think he was fighting for another two months. He time traveled Which, two months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that insane, I mean, dude? That's, that's insane. That's that's a concussion for you. I Hell mean, yeah. he crazy. he had like three concussions. He had a concussion from the first, from the initial punch. He had a concussion from his head hitting the ground, and he had a concussion from the dive bomb. He got three concussions for the price of one, right there, boys. Yes, and boy, look at the pacing of this event. And maybe it's just the. I think I think it, I think I think they edited this, re-edited it. Yeah, I'm they, sure they did. Yeah, I believe yeah. that. We're already uh, we're already at the co-main event, guys. We're already at the co-main event. We're already at George St. Pierre versus Tiago Alves. How is well, this two uh, hours and forty-four minutes? I don't understand. I'm unless I'm they're showing sure. like they must. Unless they're showing all the prelim fights after. Where where are you watching this? Uh, UFC Fight Pass. Um, this is Fight. Oh, Pass you're on me. Fight Pass. Oh, I'm. But plus, is pretty that... pretty similar. So that's probably why, because I'm watching on the you the YouTube. Oh, the yeah. YouTube event replay, um, which I was about to say, I'm, I'm not like, what is happening on your screen right now? Uh, biz, uh, GSP is doing GSP, a promo yeah. now, promo for GSP yeah. Alves. Oh. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got a GSP Alves promo as well. So, okay. Okay. All right. It's probably pretty close. That's him knocking down John Fitch and knocking his mouthpiece out. All right. Well, do we have a special guest joining us? Not yet, but we're waiting, but. Before he comes in, anything, Judd, you want to add, I guess? Oh, actually, where is AK? (laughs) No, it was just unbelievable. It was so much fun to rewatch that. Um, I'm happy that Michael Bisping ended up winning a title, even though uh, he lost Anderson Silva, so he shouldn't have won the title, but whatever. Uh, (laughs) But, man, this this was a deeply satisfying event for me for a long time. And even this day, if I'm still feeling down, like you know what let's go let's go watch young annoying michael bisping just get blasted but you said that was a fight you've seen beginning to end more than any other fight i think the actual answer is habib connor Habib but it's it's certainly in the top five like i've watched that fight a lot because also i've had a lot more time with that fight than we have with 
Habib Connor, even though at this point that fight's been quite some yeah. time, but I've watched that yeah. fight. I mean, yeah. Fry Takayama, I probably watched that fight a hundred times too, you know, like beginning to end. Like how it, yeah, or Fry, just, well, or, Fry Takayama is not like <laughs> that goes much to, longer after the Does it go two rounds? It goes two rounds. Or no, it's a 10 minute round, right? It was a 10 I minute first yeah, round. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see. Let me see how long it lasts. Yeah, but like, if I, I've watched the most. That fight. The beginning to end, uh, definitely is them in uh, Ronda versus Holly Holm from beginning to end. Yeah, I've seen that fight yeah. so many times. But uh, I've seen it a lot. I, I don't know if that's in the top five. Fry talking oh. is six minutes and ten seconds, Casey. Um, yeah, yeah I'm trying to the think what other fights would be on the list of fights okay. I've watched the most. I mean, just BJ's whole career. <laughs> like I've watched a ton of BJ fights and a ton of Jose fights and a ton of Fedor. But uh, I, I guess that's sort of the thing too, because it's not like I've gone back and rewatched a ton of Hindo or a ton of Bisping fights, but I have watched this fight a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Heck, we I've have never, a guest. I actually oh. probably have never seen this, the co-main event <laughs> again oh. since the first time. Maybe oh. I, I, mean, I have hey, we've done a GSP. If you want. I have. I have because he did a GSP. I do not. Oh, um, we're bring our... Is this is this one where he tears? Oh, are we only doing three, or can we do four? Oh, hold on, no, no, I'll set it up for four. You want? Do you want to stay I'm around, not... Jed, for this? One? I do not. I oh, do not. okay. Not. <laughs> All right. Look, it's it's nine p.m. and I, Casey, uh, shameless plug. I've got a different fight related thing to watch this evening, uh, in preparation for the next episode of This Is Cinema. So, yes. Ooh. Fair. It's, it's obviously critical. Um, and I know how this goes, even if I don't remember how it goes. But it's a GSP fight, so like I kind of know how it went, you know? All right. <laughs> well, they all went the same. So, right, so uh, this is lovely. Thanks for letting me relive the glory days. Uh, I hope we get something that cool this weekend. And is AK ready to seamlessly slot in for me? He is ready. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you very much, Mr. Thank you. Mishu. Love y'all. Yeah. We'll see you on BTL Thursday. I'm here. Uh, Canada Zone. Alexander K. Yeah. Lee getting ready for George St. Pierre's title defense against Tiago. My Alves. best friend. What the f is this? Amateur doing? hour. You guys. You guys aren't even all using the same stream. What? What, what are we doing? What are I put it. I put it in the Slack channel. It was pretty clear. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's. I'm watching the same on, one you're watching, Casey. I listen. Oh, I know yeah. these. Yeah. You guys. You guys are on. Oh, oh, okay. But thing is, I would just why not just use the YouTube? Well, because we're using this, and it's yeah. This but is... the YouTube, everyone, there's people who don't have Fight Pass. There's ESPN Plus. You could watch on Dude, YouTube yeah. too. You could do whatever you want. The, it's all the same. I'm just saying, YouTube would have been the easiest one to do. YouTube's got commercials and stuff. I don't know. I should have. I should have. You know what? It is my fault. I should have said, "Come on before the show and just fix the everything." You know. But so this, AK, I, AK, I, I oh, you know, AK, AK, we, yeah, we brought you on to debate which, yeah. which, which format we should have watched it on, not to talk it's about exactly your Canadian. Listen, buddy. This is, I'm just, I'm just trying to bring in common so, sense. So, right on your screen, GSP should be walking out, to, correct? Why don't you just say the timestamp? This isn't hard, is. guys. This isn't uh, hard to coordinate. What, Let's uh, what, do this. Five minutes, 20 seconds in counting. Yeah. One hour, five minutes, 20 seconds. Let's do this. Right. 25, 30 26, now. 27. 28, right, 29, 30. I'm looking at the magnificent George St. Pierre. Full gi. God, what a, what a G. The sec, the what a oh, G. oh, ripping off the second gi of the night. Someone already did it. Yeah. His name is Akiyama. Sexy Yama. Yeah, yeah. Winner. The, Guys, what winner. happened? Uh, wait, can we watch? Can we put on uh, John Fitch and uh, uh, what's it? That hasn't Paul happened Chicago? yet. That's a post limb. Let's, we should have reshuffled it. Was it supposed to be? Was it supposed to be? <laughs> They had to cut one uh, fight due to time constraints, and they did. Well, wait, why did they cut a fight out? The, the, what happened? It, the, the two fight. What, they must what? have had a tight. They must have had a tight uh, pay per view window for whatever reason. I, I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. They also um, well, they also had two title fights, which never happens back in two thousand nine. Yes. Very rare to have two title yes. fights in the yeah, card. Okay, I'm sure. Oh, this is Greg Jackson in the corner. Got Fr oh, Frost. Oh, look at this team. Frost the hobby. Yeah. Look at this, this power. Phil Nurse. Phil Nurse. Oh, the hair. The John Danahar. Team. Look at John Danahar's oh. hair. 
Look at Dan R. He still had some. Look at Dan R's hair. Oh my God. The brain trust behind the greatest fighter of all time. He could not lose with the army behind him. I mean, look at this team. Mythical. And then and then when these guys, some of these guys, when they started coming out with John Jones too, you were like, oh wow, like, well, now we know. I mean, now we know why John Jones is so invincible. This team, the the Jackson, I guess back then it was just Jackson's MMA. Not the Jackson Wink team. No, it was always Jackson Wink, but GSP, oh, okay. GSP was he split time between TriStar in Canada yeah, and uh, Jackson, Jackson Wink in Albuquerque. That's perfect. That's perfect. Look at look at look at how fit GSP is. All natty, baby. All natty. All he was natty. So all over back then. He was so you know, over back we, in line too. No one Super even. Over. Why are you bringing that up? Why are you bringing that up? All natty. No, there, there there were no. It's just it's just worth pointing out. Wait, wait, Tiago Alves looks wonderful. You, I both don't see you go all on that. All these fighters. Are, look, our main, we got our main event coming up. Frank Mir, all natty. Brock Lesnar, all natty. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I just, I'm amazed that these guys can achieve these physiques with no supplements whatsoever. Only 25. Away. I didn't know how young Tiago Alves. He's only 25 when People, this happened. Crazy, I right? wanted to do a lot of hype. I wanted to do some hype going into this, but I guess, again, we did the um, – I think the fight pass cut out a lot of the stuff, right? It just kind of jumps from fight to fight, right? So – Yes. Uh, There's no commercials. Tiago Alves, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Tiago Alves, white hot, um, knocked out Matt Hughes. Uh, he missed weight. Otherwise, he probably would have gotten a title shot sooner and then uh, beats Josh Koscheck. But he was considered a legitimate threat to GSP because GSP, of course, he ever was. since the Sarah yeah. loss, yeah, ha- had the, the threat of if you can hit hard, you have a chance to beat GSP. And he has, uh, Tiago has a pretty good ground game too. So they thought, oh, well, if GSP does his usual. Uh, take him down, you know, double blast, double take him down thing. Tiago be able to work his way out of it. That was kind of the thought at the time. I don't think they realized how much bigger GSP was than him. Uh, people will see how this plays out, but yeah, Tiago was uh, definitely an underdog, but people thought he had a chance. Yeah. Uh, shout out Miguel here. Unshaven Jed looks less AI. Also wanted to highlight, I hit a seven legger, turn five dollars into five fifty. Tell GC for me, please. Um, wow. I will. <laughs> Damn. But you're gonna have to like you're gonna have to provide proof though. I can't just tell him. You need to provide like a <laughs> betting them, slip. Yeah. Hey, you, you, to you bought a super chat. I believe you. Fair. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's you know using what? those winnings. Him. He's using those winnings, so it makes sense. But GC doesn't we'll GC doesn't buy into the super chat like we do. Um, he's what? back doing the production stuff. Mm-hmm. He can't just be like, mm-hmm. hey, he super chatted this. Hey, I'm gonna pay one. I'm gonna pay five ninety nine right now. I'm gonna say I hit a four hundred and sixteen leg parlay with all the March Madness, <laughs> March Mania matchups. Uh, I got everyone right, and I won seven trillion dollars. <laughs> GC. Now that's it. Just yeah, DM him uh, on IG. Just uh, proof of the betting slip, and he'll put you on the show. So this you know? was you said, Mike. This was the original main event. Up, up this was like- the original main. This was the original main event for UFC one hundred. When this card was announced, this was the main event. George St. Pierre versus Tiago Alves. Were you aware of this, AK? This was the main event. I don't the, remember that. This I did not remember event. that. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, because Brock Lesnar, Frank Mir 2 was supposed to play, take place at UFC 98. Oh. Uh, and then Frank Mir suffered an injury in training. So the fight was scratched from UFC 98. And like a day or two later, it was announced that it would be shifting to UFC 100. How about this? And then you got a uh, double main yeah. with the two two of the biggest draws in, in UFC history, George St. Pierre and Brock Lesnar, two of the most biggest, biggest pay-per-view draws. And it worked out nicely. 1.6 mil. Uh, yeah, fights underway. Blood. Shout out to yeah. Leo. Uh, how are you guys so good at predicting these fights? Thank you for the content. PTL gets you through studying at Rutgers. Love you, AK. Thanks for being an ally. Oh, Shout well, out thank to you, you. Leo. Thank you. Um, let me say, uh, before this gets all very GSP, is like Tiago was also another challenger in a long line of like, what, what makes GSP's reign so great is that he had so many compelling challengers. Um, there, there's a few clunkers if you want to point out in there, like if you're not a fan of Dan Hardy, if you're not a fan of, uh, I don't know, maybe the second Josh Koscheck fight, but everything had some heat going into it. Everything, and again, th- so so for a lot of the champs today that we criticize for like, oh, why is Islam, why did he fight whatever Volkanovski twice, stuff like that is, sometimes you just get lucky. Oy, single to a double. Look at that wrestling. Canadian Look wrestling. Vintage. So Oy. That power. Vintage GSP. And just just bullies him down again. Like, Tiago, pretty good job standing up. And now here's the, the standard uh, GSP ground and pound. But Dude, yeah, uh, uh, GSP. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that Greg Jackson ground control, 
That was like just a, just so far ahead of the curve at the, at the, at the time. It was his own just, martial art, right? A gai- Gaido mm-hmm. Jutsu or something? Yep, yep. Yeah. His own his own uh, martial art he kind of he kind of engineered or, or modified, I should say. But Mod- yep. uh, very effective. And GSP, one of the best practitioners of it for sure. Look at that. God, yeah. his, his, his athleticism is really impressive. Yeah. Uh, those are two, the first two of 10 takedowns in this fight for George St. Pierre. By Damn. The way. Oh, there's number Ooh, three. Got, got, got hooks in. Oh, wow. Oh, too high. I think there's quite a few early on because I think later, later in the later rounds, um, Tiago just isn't getting back up. Sorry, guys. Spoiler for. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Tiago I think people under, I, people understood what happened in this one. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Um, I do remember so he, thinking this fight was going to end very quickly watching this live. So GSP, and he gets the Tiago fight was after the BJ Penn fight at 94. The fight was huge. The John Fish fight actually did really well. And then uh, Dan Hardy was the one after this one. That's probably his least regarded. But then Koscheck 2, Jake Shields, Condit, Nick Diaz. I mean, it's just he has such a strong run of challengers. And it, it, it's you sometimes you just need luck. You need luck with how the cards fall. And, and it happened that way a lot for GSP. But- I, I I remember the Dan Hardy thing being a big deal. Mm-hmm. The fight was in Newark. It was. all the pro, all the promotional yeah. all the promotional yeah. events were in New York City. That's uh, what it, I'm was saying. A, it was it was a very big deal in the moment. That's yeah. that that that's like the, the least of his title defenses, and that like is was still pretty heavily promoted. It got a really yeah. good um like the countdown stuff they did for it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Dan Hardy was very popular in the UK, like not Bisping level, but he was maybe besides Bisping the most popular fighter from the UK. So there was a no one thought he had a chance, but as far as um, his marketability, he was an easy sell. So GSP's run is just up and down. The quality is so high, and I, I don't know if we'll, we get to see champions um, have that kind of level of challenger so frequently anymore. So you know, you need you need some luck, right? Uh, the jab, that was the GSP the jab. He was, and this was pre uh, 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 Roach, pre pre Freddie Roach. He hadn't gotten the Freddie Roach jab yet. <laughs> just so good. I remember when GSP beat Sean, like beat the hell out of Sean Shirk, and I was just like, "Okay, this guy's pretty freaking good. <laughs> this guy's gonna be a problem." Uh, and then the BJ yeah. Penn fight was after that, and then he won the belt against Matt Hughes after that. So, what do you guys think about not having uniforms? I, I'm I'm loving the fact that oh. Alves can wear these ridiculous trunks. <laughs> they look so, they look so good. <laughs> but like I, but but I want them to wear ridiculous things like this if they want yeah. to. I I I I don't know. I just and it's so GSP of the time are like too. very venom esque. But G- GSP know, is yeah, fighting. Yeah, is, are just so different. That's, that's underwear. GSP is just fighting in underwear. <laughs> <laughs> <Is> GSP <laughs> wearing uh, Hi- Hi- Hayabusa. Is that Hayabusa? I can't. See, I can't. I'm see not. The, sure. I don't, I'm not sure. I, 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 I can't, can't see, see the waistline. People in Under, the comments, correct me, please. I don't think. Uh, I don't think it is so. What does the waistband say? I can't read it. Hard to fightclub.com. Oh, oh another takedown from GSP. Wow. Uh, nice combination by Tiago. Nice Very combination, nice. right? I mean And GSP, but he knew it but once it came, he's like, oop, duck under. Yeah. Uh, Tiago's two fighter, got two fighters on this main card. Uh still active today, but in the bare knuckle world. Uh Alva's being one, getting ready to fight Mike Perry in Knuckle Mania. Yeah. The other was Alan Belcher. Uh, who wow. fought at, Fiona, at heavyweight? <laughs> a, now a, a heavyweight uh, in game bread. Crazy. What a, what a weird Absolutely. connection. <laughs> I didn't even check the date. This is what is this? July two thousand nine. Wow. July eleven two thousand nine. We're running through some years very. We're running through some different facts and figures about this card. I um, I should. I should so tell people, Mike. So um, so and John Jones and Jim Miller are the only two active fighters yes mma fighters who are still yes. in the ufc but are any of them even fighting mma anymore who who uh, uh, on um, this card uh, sorry, the whole card in general like grant uh, retired tom law is a pro wrestler pro wrestling don hyun kim okay. on physical physical 100 season two right now oh. akiyama's on physical 100 as well 100, you know? yeah. no that was uh first season first season yeah first season yes this is yeah. <laughs> you're an expert oh i i love that show I mean, AK, in your eyes, TJ Grant, maybe he comes back. We still haven't gotten that story completed yet. You know, yet. hasn't filed the papers, I don't think. But uh, I should say, by the way, guys, I was still, when this card happened, I was still very new to watching MMA. I think my first event was the first Brock and Amir fight that I actually watched all the way through. 
because my friends knew I was a pro wrestling guy and they're like, oh, you know, you like Brock, right? He's doing it. Come over, come over and watch his event. And I was like, this is when people still did that, you know, had people come over and watch events. And I was like, yeah, for sure. So, so that was only 80 something, uh, UFC 83 or 87 or something. So I, I was very, very new to MMA still at this time and just learning so much. So I was a noob, guys. I was a noob you know, watching this fight. You know, I, I worked the Brock Lesnar's first professional fight. We mm. fought uh, the K one show. In, no, yeah, the yeah. K one show in Los Angeles. Oh, in LA. Sorry, Japan. Yeah, Japan. Sorry. You mean LA sorry. Coliseum, bro? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. I was I was there for the original press conference when it was Brock and um, homeboy who's like thirty feet tall. Um, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, he was supposed to fight. Uh, Hungman Choi. Hungman Choi. Hungman Choi. Yes. Uh, Hungman Choi. And then Hungman Choi got injured. Oh no, no, he didn't get injured. He didn't pass uh, whatever CSAC medicals um, for some reason or another. <sighs> Yeah, because mm-hmm. he's gigantic. GSP probably so sick, yeah. man. Uh, that's another takedown. Another beautiful takedown. Big GSP. takedown by GSP. Beautiful, uh, perfectly down. timed. Dude, you know, earlier, Mike, you were talking about like you know you were watching Akiyama Belcher. How it kind of felt like you were watching MMA from an era. When I watch GSP fight, though, everything still works. Everything he's doing mm-hmm. still works. Like, like he kind of this, like, this just- was like this was the modern blueprint for like yeah wrestling and ground and pound and fighting the, and, the suggestion, and controlling the fight with wrestling yeah yeah the suggestion and i know this was just a twitter conversation and not like a conversation that actual like intelligent people have but uh the suggestion that he wouldn't compete with this era of welterweights is so oh stupid oh my god that is ridiculous. I've never seen I, it was nothing it was, it was just someone troll someone trolling oh, no, no. because because Dana said the thing, Usman's the greatest of all time. And then someone did a tweet like, oh, well, Dana's not wrong. Here's why, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> and it's just what? completely insane. Dana trying to sell his own fight. And this is what Dana should be doing. He's a promoter. That's actually what he should be doing, selling his own fighter. So yeah. but it's not uh, yeah. true. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably not even a freaking welterweight uh, anymore. Yeah. But like, um, that, yeah, I saw that tweet. I immediately muted oh. that person because it was the best <laughs> I've ever seen. Um, Casey's smart. Casey Casey's not on Twitter at all. He's smart. He doesn't even see this bull. Yeah, no, I'm, like, done. I'm done. So I'm done. The out. tweet was basically the tweet was basically saying that GSP wouldn't even be like a title contender. Oh yeah, in yeah. UFC. Like pri- like twenty like prime I mean like twenty nine tw- year old GSP. Twenty nine year old GSP would absolutely still be now. right there. Yeah. Dude, and he'll be he would be better because he would even have you know newer techniques too like like yeah it's just that's just dumb dude if this if george st pierre now like got into a like took a year and got into like fighting shape if he fought leon edwards like would you have to think about that would you think about who would win that fight oh i think people would at his age well well, you're talking about gs what's gsb now 40 something yeah he's 40 something now okay well eight Age will be different, but he will be competitive. I will say that at his For age, sure. which is incredible. Because remember, what, what's the record? If you're over 35, you're like 0 and 90, and he's and we're we're saying GSP is going to be competitive at 40 against a younger, you know, in a prime welterweight champion. So, yeah, he is just a mauling uh, Tiago Alves right now, mm-hmm. uh, winning winning positions on the ground, mm-hmm. just just, oh, just passing, pound throwing ground and pounds. Like he is. Uh, this this is a it that knee one of his fights. dude that knee shelf. Uh, oh. We were literally doing the same thing today in team practice. <laughs> yeah. Today, like we we, we that guard in, in shelving mm-hmm. the the leg from your uh, the opponent underneath. This is crazy. He's Amazing. doing the same thing that works today. GSP was just playing a different yeah. sport back then. Like yeah. You, yeah. Alan Belcher and Akiyama were like they were fighting. Like they were fighting. They're fight. Mm-hmm. They were getting into a fist fight. Mm-hmm. Um, there was not a lot of mixing of the martial arts yeah. there. I mean, there were some moments where they hit the mat, um, but this is like this is fight yeah. IQ and game plan it's, and stuff like that. Yeah, game when plan, a lot yeah. of these other fights of this era were just game plans, are just completely fights, out the window. Yeah. yeah. Dude, and Alva, no, and he, Alva, Alva's is incredibly athletic, and he's doing a great job of getting yeah. up and 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 just and keeping this competitive. But he's just he's just trying to catch up though. To, he's so big too, like Alves for this division. That's why a lot of people thought yeah. he might give GSP some problems. But oh, yeah, absolutely. He he, well, he he can, and I mean, if they fought ten times, Alves wins. You know, maybe one of them too. I don't know, but for the vast majority, GSP's just just his game plan, his his fight IQ is just, and just sticking to a game plan. Yeah, Tiago, with um, no like no neck, so you can't choke him. No, yeah, no. <laughs> Two clear rounds for GSP so far. 
Um, it's not rocket. It should be said that that GSP was not immune to criticism in his time. But by, by this fight, he was already getting sort of a reputation for like, oh, he just takes people down. Uh, he doesn't, you know, he 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 can't finish. He can't finish people. But you watch a performance like this, and you're like. That's a credit to Tiago Alves, not a, not an insult to James, because George St. Pierre is landing some bombs on the ground. He is doing yeah, ground he's and beaten, pound. He's beating Tiago's ass in this fight. This could not be like more the opposite of lay and pray. Like he he in retrospect, I'm like, oh well, he was just a lay and pray guy. I'm like that is so that is from people who did not were not in the era or just did not like ground fighting at all. He was very actually usually very fun to watch on the ground. I would say one thing, like I'm not a fan of Rogan's commentary now, but in mm. this time period. Rogan, I thought, was so critical to kind of explaining to new fans what GSP is doing and why it is so freaking amazing what he's doing. Yeah. And Rogan I thought, UK. yeah, it's and he's very critical to the UFC success in this moment. In this this moment, yeah, he because was, he it, was I, 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 yeah, and he, he and I think he was just better too. He was, a hundred percent. Just like the subtle nuances and mm-hmm. stuff of. Just the, the skill sets. Because it, this is, it takes a long, I mean, you have to watch a lot of MMA to really understand what you're watching. And GSP, if you're, if, if you're just coming into this and GSP is your first fight you're watching, yeah, you can tell he's dominating, but you don't really know why in a sense of other, well, why he's just lying on top of the guy. That must, what's so hard about that? You know, did you, but. Did you, did you oh, see him sneaking that, that, that Superman punch in the middle of that exchange? Yeah, it was, it was like that is crazy. Like the timing to land something, it, it landed too. To land something like that against a guy, a really good kickboxer, Tiago Alves, and the, that is just wild. Like, what a great fighter, man! <laughs> great, Holy so crap. good. Yeah. Uh, if you're just jumping on, uh, we'll get the timer fixed. Uh, we're at four oh one. I got, I got, I got it. Just queued up now. Professional. I got too, I got too excited Stop talking about know. GSP. I forgot, I forgot the, and, yeah. and I was just talking. I could be, a, I could, I could be a timekeeper in the third fight. I've already messed up. God, oh, I didn't start yeah. it again. <laughs> ah, jeez. <laughs> it's happened. Maybe you could be, the PF, maybe you could be for a PFL tour. Uh, yeah. There's some time mix-ups on the Belfast yeah. card. Memory. So as you guys said, third round. GSP is showing a lot of respect for Tiago's power. There is no like, like you said, sticking to the game plan. That is something. We, 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 we kind of laugh at a lot of guys fight IQ these days. Mm-hmm. If you want to know why GSP is one of the best, he, you almost, I don't think there's a single fight where I ever questioned his fight IQ. And there's the takedown. So he good. always, yeah, he knew what he wanted to do. He, he, they, they, the team, they knew how to get the opponents to get into the range, to get into the rhythm so they could do what they wanted to do, or excuse me, the, uh, the rhythm, the rhythm. Uh, I should have come in with the GSP impression. Sorry guys. I'll do one after, uh, I, I let the people down. Do my GSP impression. Save it for later. This is not uh, a fun fight for Tiago yeah. Alves. No, he's just getting. It, this is pretty <laughs> much the point where it's just like he's cooked. He's about to be he's having cooked a bad here. time. He's having a bad time. Yeah. GSP is nah, just gonna is... stay on top. Yep. Everyone agree with Casey, and that's true. This is when yeah. Rogan was at his absolute best. He was so mm-hmm. important uh, to the growth of the sport from a commentator perspective. He's so good. <laughs> Now he's just stoned uh, and yells at the calf kicks. <laughs> yeah. He's also like incredibly, he's also like the biggest broadcaster on earth right now. He is. This podcast. He's, he's very rich, very busy man. Um, very rich is the understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's already like pretty much said it. Like he just, he just does this because he likes it. He doesn't have to do this. He just does it because he likes yeah. sitting close and talking about fights. Ooh. Whoa. That, 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 oh. Well, he's kind of got his knuckle in his face. Yeah, yeah, he pulled his chin rude. up. Yeah, that's rude. a bit rude, yeah. Casey. I don't know if I. That was very rude. That's very un-Canadian of you, GSP. <laughs> he had a mean streak. Eh? GSP had a mean streak that people like. I think it's because of the Dan Hardy fight, where it's like, oh, I didn't want to break his arm. Everyone's kind of like, oh, GSP never really wanted to hurt people in there, but like he was. No, he, he was wanted to break eager. his arm. He just couldn't. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah, just... True. And think oh, about well, this, okay. AK. Shot. We're three fights into this main card. The referees were Mario Yamasaki, Mario Yamasaki, and Steve Mazzagatti. Those are three names I have not heard in a long days. time. Well, it's two, but just twice. But Who is uh, our referee for the main event? Herb? Yeah. Oh, it's got to be John. It's her- I think it's Herb. It's Herb. Herb. John. No, John, John wasn't. He was, he was ousted. He wasn't. He was like. At 100? Mm-hmm. 
Really? I don't remember. That far back? Who is it? Uh, Let's see. It was Herb. Yeah. Good call. So Tiago in this round, as you can see, if anyone watching along with us, they can see he kind of did a better job of staying on his feet, but... He's also been taken down so many times he cannot unleash his his full arsenal. This was a, one of the other problems with fighting oh. GSP is, and there's a knockdown by GSP. Yep, with a leg kick. A oh, leg the, the, that is not wow. a nice GSP. Wow. Raining wow. elbows from guard. That is not being nice. That is not a polite GSP. That is wow. yeah, it's not boring GSP. This is GSP yeah. trying to finish this dude, and Tiago's yeah. just tough as shit. Yeah, this is prime Tiago. Maybe not, but 25 year old just. Just trapped wow. <laughs> I have forever. Not, I have not watched this fight in forever, and I forgot how good this fight was for GSP. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but because but I want to ask because I don't remember if it happened. This is a fight where he injured his groin. This is uh, the fight? George St. Pierre. This is the fight. I don't know if he already has or if it happens in the fourth round. And then we get the uh, the George... Uh, the famous George, line. Um, uh, Greg Jackson. Wait, wait, let's, yeah, let's, let's, listen, yeah, listen. Let's, let's listen in here, yeah. You'll have to give me some commentary. Oh, no. Now we're getting Rogan. Rogan let's having to correct uh, Goldie. Goldie. Goldie saying GSP is not really a wrestler. <laughs> By this point, it was pretty established that, that uh, GSP was a wrestler. So I, I, I think I know what Goldberg was trying to say. He doesn't come from a wrestling background. I mm. think that's what Goldberg was saying. Yeah. But, but take take down GSP was a, very much a thing already. Breathing techniques for GSP, <laughs> just a you know, just a teachable fighter. Even at the, even as champion of the world, just always a student of the game. Always a tremendous listener. Already on his feet, ready to go. Didn't Greg Jackson have like an incredible line about this in this fight? About this is the this is the hit him with your groin fight. Uh, I don't. I think it happens after yes. this round. I think it is. Uh, okay. The injury does happen here. Yeah. Hit him with your groin. Hit him, or I, I think it's hit him with your groin, or hit, hit him with it. Hit him with it. Hit him with your groin. Hit him with your groin, or hit him with it. So. I'd hit him in the groin. Hit him with your hit him groin. With you, which is legal. Which is legal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you, can, you absolutely Offensive. can knock someone out with your groin. <laughs> Offensive oh, groin wanna... usage uh, is is okay, and it encouraged. Uh, I wanted to talk about <laughs> Tiago's shorts again. Uh, so what do you got? Tappersnapfc.com. Uh, oh. Tap out on the on the. Oh. <laughs> Well, GSP is like, you know what? Stop talking about his shorts. Now you can't see the shorts anymore. So, okay. I'm, I apologize. I cannot almost see the shorts. almost tackled through the fence. Holy hell. Jfish, appreciate you. Where did you watch UFC 100 on July 11, 2009? I hey, watched Casey, it. Do you remember oh. where you were? Oh, go ahead, Casey. You go first. I, I, I realized where I watched it because I was working at Elite XD at the time, and I watched it at my the travel coordinator's apartment in Hollywood. That's where oh. I watched it. Where did we you were, watch it? Do you remember? I was uh, at my at my uncle Lou, Uncle Lou, my uncle Lou, who recently had a uh, had to go to the hospital. Nothing super serious, but uh, shout out to my uncle Lou. Hope you're feeling better. But yes, I remember watching it at his place. It was even as a it was a real oh man. Like again, I was this was in my early like oh my god. I started getting to UFC and I just I was wanted to see everything UFC. I wanted to devour everything UFC and I asked my uncle if he could uh, host the host the show. And uh, sure enough, good time, a very good. Time. How much? How much was the pay per view at the time? I think it was fifty bucks. 50. Yeah, or fifty, but Canadian fifty nine ninety nine maybe. How did you order it? Like, how does it? How did it work back then? Do you have to you have to call a number? How how no. did I, I? I'm trying to remember how pay per views worked back then. By then, I think we still had. I think they had already started on demand. Like most cable oh, networks. Was had it on demand at on, that point? On okay. demand. Yeah, it wasn't maybe quite as smooth. It wasn't like quite as easy to find. I think, but I believe it was just you can order. Uh, you can order. Yeah, right, you either lives are so convenient. Call, you either ordered it online to your account. Some, if you had the fancy box, you could order it on the box, uh, or uh, you could call your local cable provider and they will send whoa, whoa, it. What happened? How did Elvis get on top? Is it, I guess, it, what did I miss? That might have been this, might have been the groin injury. The groin right injury, there was, yeah. There was, there was an exchange, uh, there was a scramble, and now Elvis is on top. Uh, Elvis, at this point, is just a shadow of the dude that walked into the cage 15 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, this, this fight changed him <laughs> as a human being, probably. Yeah. This is the dude. Remember when he not freaking knocked out Matt Hughes? That was crazy. That was amazing, just amazing. Yeah, Tiago was rider. Yep. Uh, 
I remember this was the time when I said, you, you, you still had to put in a password or something to access your pay-per-view channel or something. It was like, put in your four-digit password if you want to order a pay-per-view. And I'm like, whoa, that, was, that, that I do remember. That was strange. Uh, great comment from Screw You. Uh, Elvis <laughs> Shorts, a great reminder of what's lost since the Reebok era, correct? Mm -hmm. Truly, yeah. truly. Champion Nutrition, I think, at the top of his shorts, on the back. It's a good round for Tiago. This has to yeah. be a Tiago round, right? Okay. Did Tiago win this round? round? He's mm -hmm. around the GOAT. I mean, that's... Uh... I'm going to go scoring right now. I'll let people know. I won't say the, I won't say the final score. I'm just going to say whether Tiago took one. Uh, let's see. I have it open here. Tiago. No, no, he does not. I'm sorry. It's not. Yeah, he, so didn't do Oh, he just ate, ate a hook. Didn't do enough. And I assume we do have 90 seconds left in the round. Yeah. So. Yeah. And remember the scoring much different now. Mm -hmm. Is it in, than it was in 2009? Remember octagon control AK. Yeah. GSP is, yeah, you can tell oh, GSP's uh, yes. mo mobility is different now. Like, or he looks oh, really yeah. tired or just, yeah. Or yeah, something happened to him, which going on. Ah, Ooh, there we go. Did, yeah. And still Eats gets a, a kick, catches it. Off yeah. A... yeah, that's unreal. That is that's just unreal. that is not that is not easy. That the, he eats a leg kick, catches it, lifts it up, still takes him down against a a high level fighter like Tiago Alves. Yeah, in the oh. fourth round. In the fourth round. Oh man, I'm. Yeah. And... You know, okay, I. Well, okay, I gotta say, watching this when I was new into as a fan of the sport, I did not have the same appreciation of it as I do now watching GSP. What what he's doing right now, losing this, losing that round, and coming back. Even that, oh man, this is great. He's got his back. Both For hooks. Are sure, fun. I remember. Like I knew, I, I knew he was, I knew he was winning, but I couldn't like explain. I my my knowledge of why he's winning is oh, GSP is on top more. GSP is almost choking him. Like that's that would have been the analysis I could have given you back then. I didn't know all the stuff about passing, like oh he keeps pass yeah. how he can pass his guard, how he stays on top, how he shifts his weight. I didn't understand yeah. any of that stuff. And now I'm watching yep. it now, I'm like, it was even better than I thought. Like Yeah, yeah. Here we me go. too. Here we go. I, I absolutely I feel the same way. I have a lot more appreciation. Well, here it comes. Wait, wow. listen. All right, I gotta turn this up. Here, here, right here. Listen. There it is. Hit him with the groin. <laughs> Hit him with the groin. Awesome. I don't care. It's like, oh, I hurt my groin. I don't care. Here. Hit, Hit him, him with your groin. groin. Oh, man. Greg Jackson. We're he was like team. the guy. Greg, Greg was the, the corner dude. He was mm -hmm. the one. Greg Jackson, like, honestly, like, if it wasn't for him, I, I don't think I would honestly still be working in MMA because it was my friendship of him meeting him at events that he oh. really taught me and made me understand the sport and the I mean it sounds weird but the humanity involved in it and everything and uh, mm -hmm. yeah so this is really cool because I'm watching this now not I didn't know who Greg Jackson was in in this moment so it's, it's super neat watching it yeah so funny watching ago. the way these guys look at each other. Years. Coming out of the off the stools in the fifth round, even GSP looked like super angry. Tiago Alves looks like he could have been fighting Jake Gyllenhaal in the Roadhouse remake. Yeah. <laughs> great movie, great movie, yeah. uh, great, great movie. Uh, yeah, I, I think, great. like I, if anyone has ever injured their groin before, imagine oh. injuring your groin after and go all the other stuff that's probably happened in this fight, and then saying, "Oh, here's another." You have to go another five minutes with a five minutes. Killer. With a groin injury, and I know, I know he's got adrenaline going. I get it. I know he's a high level athlete, but just think about that. Like, think about the mentality. Okay, you know, I'm going to ignore. I have a groin injury for five minutes. I'm just going to ignore it and just fight and fight another human being. Fighters. And he's throwing Superman else. jabs. He's throwing Fighters Superman jabs. Oh my god. Uh, how would this version of Alves fit into the current UFC welterweight division? Would he get to the title shot or nah? Like this, the, the size would be even worse. Now, the size differential would be even worse. It's hard to say. I'm yeah, not sure. Um, it's yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, look, still, he's, he's still a player. Yeah. Who would I mean, you compare the PI, him to? The PI is available, so they could help him with his weight cut. They could help him get down to one seventy in a more healthy way, which he obviously didn't have in two thousand nine. 
Uh, he's just a massive dude who just drained himself to get to 170. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he'd be, there's a chance he'd be like a top 15 guy. Um, there are clearly holes in his game. Most of, most of which in the grappling department and especially in this division, fighting wrestlers, this is a pretty tough division to be in. Colby, Usman, Shafkat, Bilal. I mean, just a lot of damn good wrestlers in here. So I think he gets some good wins, but I don't know if he'd get to a title shot. Be tough. I I think he's good enough to make the top 10, but I agree a, a little bit tougher to get a title shot. Which is pretty much who he was then. He was top 10. He kind of earned his title shot. He might have earned his title shot in, in the mm-hmm. modern era, but I don't. Oh. Mm-hmm. I think I think that yeah. Top fifteen, top ten, which yeah. I think kind of where he was even uh, in this in this time. I mean he won he won seven fights in a row and he knocked out Matt Hughes. Yeah. So I mean I mean he earned it. He's got wins over He knocked out uh, uh, John Fish with that up kick. The up kick, right? John Fish, right? Oh no, John Fish knocked him out. Really? John Fish I don't remember. Him out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The first time they fought. The first time they fought. Wait, 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 oh, wait, wait, okay. wait, wait. They fought again later, and John, and John Fitch just John Fitched him. But the first time they fought, John Fitch actually finished him with an up kick. It was actually a very good yep. feather in the cap for John Fitch, or he got his own title fight with uh, with GSP. Man, two minutes to go, and you just know Tiago's pretty much done. Um, bar, barring a, a hail mary shot, it's like it's pretty much out of. It. I forgot Tiago Alves stayed in the UFC until 2019. Yeah. That's friggin' yeah. wild. I forgot all about the Tim Means oh, fight in 2019. Yeah. Oh, I remember yeah, that some- brutal knockout um, that he got from Carlos Condit. Was it Carlos Condit that knocked oh, him? Yeah. That's Carlos a fight I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind rewatching. Is the Condit, um, GSP Condit again. I. I oh my God. That fight is so exciting. It oh is. my god. That that's a fight that almost stopped my heart. When <laughs> when Kaiser got him. Every Canadian won a fight. Our hearts stopped. Stopped, Casey. People can listen to the the damn episode on Carlos Condit where we celebrate the great uh, natural born killer. And uh that fight I had to revisit it and I enjoyed it for the most part, but even even seeing how close it came again to Condit just taking him out is just just talking about it is making me emotional. It's, <laughs> So scary. Classic GSP here, just getting after it. Uh, would be cool if you guys did some watch alongs like once a month and went back through old Pride, Pancrase, UFC, King of the Ring, etc. Pick out the best fights or events. You can add historical context. Cool. Don't Maybe. hate it. Don't hate Go it. Down for it. It's up to you guys. It's up yep. to you guys. Ain't our call. If you guys mm-hmm. like these, we'll keep doing them. But you got to watch this, them. This is definitely, friends. yeah. Definitely an easy one to do this one. Only a four fight main car. Some incredible. So I, I was watching yeah. like about the Bing, Bing Henderson fight. Just waiting. Just waiting for that Henderson. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what. Oh, I'm kind of mad Jed spoiled it for me. Spoiled it for me. I didn't know. I thought it happened in the first round. So I was just on. I was just like this the whole time. Uh-huh. He was like, it doesn't happen yet. I'm like, God dang it, Jed. <laughs> just be just told Tiago my groin. Just because you know, why not? Just, just tell him. Oh yeah, look at look at GSP. Yeah, he's in, oh. he's in so much pain right now. He is That's in incredible. That's incredible to go through all that pain <laughs> uh, and to still dominate the last round and a half. I think with yeah, uh, Joe Silva, Joe Silva sighting. Yeah, Good Jesus, drink. Joe Silva. There he is, Joe Silva sighting. Good job, Tiago. Tiago. You did your best after this. Fight. You know what's funny? Well, even though even, match, even those little things, like which the UFC just doesn't do anymore, like Joe Silva. If you remember Joe Silva, after every if if the fight had if the fight was decent at all, Joe Silva would always walk in and at least shake the hands of both of both competitors. And yeah, mm-hmm. the UFC just it, they're just yeah. You know, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to go into that, but. Oh my, he is. He wants to go to the hospital right now. <laughs> he is, <laughs> or at least get some this. ice. Get some ice on his nads or something. Like he is. Her, he's like, how much longer do I have to be out here? <laughs> he's like, I, he I did it, Greg. I hit him. I hit him with my groin three times. <laughs> 
And who is that guy like, holding the belt? Who is that guy holding I the belt? Know. Who is Beck that? Hansen? Wow. <laughs> Singer songwriter Beck was. Oh, I have no man. idea. Man, look look how messed up. For people that said that it was just you know lay and pray, look how messed up Tiago <laughs> no, Alves looks. Not this fight. Not this fight. No. That's for sure. But you know what I mean. Like, oh, the, yeah, he beat yeah. he beat oh, that, he beat the hell out of Tiago in this fight. Hold on. Fifty forty five, fifty forty five, fifty forty four. And GSP gets the win. Dana White wraps the belt around him. The old school belt. Nope. Yeah. We're getting a we're getting a Rogan interview here. In a good fight. Yeah, I did not remember how injured GSP was. We kind of joke about the whole hit him up the groin, but the reality <laughs> was he was very hurt. he was very compromised in those last rounds yep. and a half. Very if compromised. That happened in, in the third round instead of the fourth round, who knows? I don't know. Oh, who knows history. how, how oh. Tiago might have been able to capitalize? The, le- yeah. the, leg- the legacy changes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's his final fight of two thousand nine. Doesn't fight again until the Dan Hardy fight in March. Look at Rogan with hair, man. It's crazy. It's just funny, like seeing everybody. They all look just like different people. Michael, Biz- watching Michael Bisping walk out was wild. It was freaking. Wild. Oh, he says it. Ha- he says it did happen in the third round. I think he just said it did happen in the third round. Wow. So maybe didn't re- didn't really start feeling it till the. In, in the middle of the fourth. He's trying to stretch it out mid-interview. Yeah. Joe, Ro- Joe Rogan, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. This is the most like unhappy I've ever seen George St. Pierre. <laughs> Just take down City, but he, he made it all work. There's a jab, let Tiago counter. Duck under takedown. Did that like a million times. Ten total takedowns for GSP in this victory. Uh, oh, no. All right. He took the mic from Joe. Remember those? Remember those moments? <laughs> now shutting out all the sponsors. You got to do that. You got to get paid. Yeah, after you gotta party. Gotta, yeah, where's your after party, man? Come on. <laughs> and you got to get the after party. I'm Shout surprised they haven't ed- edited sponsor. some of this stuff out. I'm surprised they haven't edited some of the stuff out on uh, Fight Pass. Oh, dude, I'm sure. Sponsor shout out. Oh, I'm sure there, there's Lester's, a lot of stuff that's edited out. Yeah. Brock's getting censored. There's no doubt about it. The uh, Coors Light thing, that ain't, that ain't making it. Just, I'll be stunned. <laughs> I'll be stunned if that's in there. There's Frank Mir warming up in the back. Warming up to someone's Frank office. Mir, a freaking young dude. Yeah, and there's Brock. He gets like his own big ass dressing room with his own banner hanging up in there. Death clutch. Now, do you guys remember? Yeah, who, do you guys CSW, remember who, you baby. Thought, who was your pick going into this into this fight? Brock Lesnar. Casey. De- definitely Brock. Brock for this one, but who did, who did, who did Brock fight after this? Keith Herring. Was it- oh, after this fight, uh, Carwin. Oh, Carwin. Okay, yeah. I remember I definitely did not pick him against Kane. I was I was I was hundred percent. No, no, no. Th- I thought I, w- I was like, oh, Kane, Kane's the next oh, monster. Well, <laughs> so so here's the thing: is uh, I never picked a Brock Lesnar fight right in the UFC. Uh, <laughs> I think until the Mark Hunt fight. I think the Mark Hunt fight was the only one. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I thought you, he was going to beat Overeem. I did pick to beat Kane. You picked a no contest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I you picked a no contest that we did. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, yeah, I. Well, I mean, really, let's be honest. A lot of us probably should have picked a no contest based on uh, yeah. What we thought, but, uh, but I thought he's gonna be Alistair. I thought he's gonna be Kane. I thought he's gonna lose to Carwin. I thought he was gonna lose this fight too. I thought he was gonna lose. Uh, he should have lost to Carwin. He loses that fight. I think forty nine out of fifty times. I don't but... know. I'm with uh, Josh Rosenthal, who did not stop that fight. I've watched. No, 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 no. It was, it was great. It was great. Oh, but man. um, I mean, it was a great non stoppage. But I mean, yeah. <laughs> A different referee, it could have been handled very differently. Easily. Uh, for sure. For sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought Frank Mir – because the first fight, 
again, when I, I knew very little about the UFC, so but all I saw was, oh, my guy who I know from the world of quote unquote fake wrestling got submitted by a real fighter. And yeah, he looked great, you know, up until that point. But in my mind, I was like, ah, he kind of beginner's luck type thing. And now that Frank Mir has had a chance to like study what went wrong, I'm like, Frank Mir is going to submit him again. That was my thinking. Again, I knew very little about fighting uh, about the UFC. So this is me trying to be smart, I think. I think I was like a newbie trying to be like, yeah, I know how this is going to go. Brock can't do that again. He can't just – he can't do what he did the first time. Wait, why is this broadcast actually two hours and 44 minutes? There's no way this goes for more than – they, maybe they show the post limb on it. And maybe they just uh, – yeah, I, mean, I believe it, it does have the it does have the post limb, yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. It yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's the last, uh, that's the last uh, half an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, we, do, we, do we want to watch John Fitch versus – We no, no, don't. No, 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 no. I can tell you guys – I can tell you guys how that fight. Went. I mean, I can tell you any John Fish fight went, but that I fight think specifically anybody because, knows how that went. Yeah, I, I am. I am telling people that fight did air. I be, if anyone remembers, I let me know. Was it on Facebook? Because I did watch it live. I remember distinctly watching it live after the pay per view. I don't, don't think it was on the pay per view, though. It's possible they might have just. They may have just said, like said, yeah, whatever. Have it on if you stick around. I maybe it was on Facebook. Anyone who was there, please remind uh, in the comments. Shout it out. Where did you? Where did you watch? Where were you? When you watch John Fitch, John Fitch the, the post limb, because I know I, was, I saw it the night of. I know I, I was sitting in this chair when I found out that fight even happened, just earlier today. <laughs> so you thought you had never watched that fight before? No, I had no idea. I know that fight. I mean, I think I knew the fight happened, looking at his record, but I I didn't realize it was a post limb on UFC 100. So there was actually quite a bit of intrigue going to that fight because Paulo Tiago in his first fight uh, smoked Josh Koscheck in the first round. And Josh Koscheck, of course, was the training partner of John Fitch. So they threw yeah. Ti- Tiago right into the water because they thought, yeah. oh, man, he takes out. And then John Fitch just yeah, and, 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 uh, and that was, that, Yeah, and that was kind of, I want to say a lucky punch, but that Tiago, you know, it's, it's MMA, small gloves. These things happen, that, yeah. that type of fight. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's a, that's why that fight was even considered for the main card. And then uh, later, uh, Okay. Oh, so, so there, was, there was a storyline going into it. Okay. There was. Gotcha. Yeah, there was. And, and, and people thought, man, Paul Tiago beats John Fitch. I mean, there you go. Hey, GSP has his next challenger already. Oh, right? because he, he beat Paul two wrestlers. Th- yeah, because two, two, two good wrestlers. wrestlers. Yeah. 12 and 0, undefeated. It would have been like, oh, there you go. Yeah, he had a good story. He was like that Brazilian secret police or whatever thing he does. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah SWAT team, I think. SWAT team, yeah. Sorry. But uh, yeah, did did not did not happen. Uh, John Fitch, uh, thirty twenty seven or twenty nine twenty eight, whatever it was. And, Somebody, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't, yeah, you're right. Thank thank you for bringing that. Uh, yeah, your story. Listen, I'll, you. I'll I'll never disrespect a good post limb, Casey. <laughs> right? I'll never disrespect a good post limb. You know me. Yeah. No, we we, yes. we, uh, we 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 trashed Bellator. Bellator, they knew it. They knew it was up. But post limbs are the way to go. That's where the real stories yes. are. And they had like and three or four per show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You see, only have one. You see, only have one. (laughs) And much like the Bellator prelim, uh, post limbs for the most part, uh, after the main event ended, everybody left from everything (laughs) that I've read. There's like nobody in the building for John Fitch versus Paulo Tiago because Brock Lesnar was just, they were just like, okay, I've seen it. We're out of here. Probably half people in attendance didn't even know that fight was even happening. Do we know when the last post limb was for the UFC? It's got to be this one. This this was it. I think it's the only one. And they've had yeah. it before. I mean, you say you're the only one. I think so. I don't think they ever did post limbs before, before huh. or after. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I, I could be wrong. Um, so I know there were, there were post there were there were actually dark fights, but were the dark fights on the prelims or the post limbs? They were prelims. It's just they didn't. Prelim. There were ones that there was a time they didn't air anywhere, and then when they started airing them on Facebook, it like blew people's minds. Like, whoa! I can watch prelims on Facebook. This is crazy. Mark Delagrati was in. Frank Mir's corner for this fight? I didn't remember that. And uh, what's his name? Robert Drysdale. Oh, we knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, I hey. didn't expect to see in Frank's corner. Shout out to Nevada Commission. Still wearing the same jackets. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Consistency. Consistency. Oh, Frank wait, Mir wait, wait, rocking wait. the Nutribolics hat. Is this the real one? I don't know if this is the real one. No. Um, the music? No. No, no, no. 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 On the, oh, maybe it is. I didn't. I don't know if it's serial or not. A lot of lowercase it. letters. UFC seventy seven stat. That might be Ariel. Okay, if this is real Ariel, what was the event we first worked on? So called <laughs> Ariel Hawani. 
Oh, oh wow. He, All right. So he's saying I UFC 77 had a post limb. And that so fight I, happened uh, after Anderson versus Marquardt. This got to be Helwani. It wow. just has to be. <laughs> he's correct. He is correct. This bout, this bout aired after Silva versus it Franklin. Is I. Uh, Silva yep, it is I. Of course. Of course. Wow. <laughs> so honored. So honored. I still want to see. I still want to see if he remembers. He, there's no doubt in my mind he remembers the first event you guys worked together. I just want to see if he gets it right. So we can put it up on the screen. Hey, Frank, Helwani, there it is. Is. What was the first Frank event we worked like together? 22. Ah, it's there. It's there. You got it. Oh my God! It's him. <laughs> it is me. He just said, <laughs> "Come on, bro." Come on, bro. And just just to be sure, uh, he hit us up in the Slack channel too that it is him. Uh, All so right, it's the real Helwani, ladies and gentlemen. It's the real Helwani. Does he want to jump Frank on? Okay. Right. Does he want to? If he wants to jump on, I can. We should. It'd be incredible. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see. Yeah, the invitation is open. Would love for that to happen. There's Frank Mir. You see Shogun in the background in the crowd with the bad boy T just staring a hole right into the Frank Mir. Just just that guy, Shogun. And there he is. It's so crazy how young he looks. It's freaking wild. <laughs> and he bu he bulked up a lot for the second. No, yes, he bulked I up. Remember this. At, no, was it after this? He bulked up for the Carwin after this. fight, right? He fought Carwin. Oh no, yeah, he fought Carwin. He lost to Carwin though. Yeah, he bulked up a little bit for this fight, but it was after Actually, this fight where he really took it to another level and he started like doing a whole bunch yeah. of like heavy bodybuilding type workouts to put on a whole bunch of other size. That's a great, a great atmosphere. A <laughs> it's just so crazy seeing like the banners and all the sponsors, Nutribolics everywhere and Zions, Zion. Was Zions an actual energy Echo. drink? Like, could you actually buy yeah, Zions? Yeah, yeah. I, I drank. Know. I used to love Zions energy really? drinks. Really? Okay, they were really delicious. Back in like 2009, I was a like I was oh. a big, I was a big weightlifter, um, but I was like, I don't know, I wasn't doing like what I'm doing now, where I like I actually knew what I was doing. I just took like a bunch of supplements like protein and like all these different things like pre-workout post-workouts all these different things for like no real reason people were just doing it um but i remember like talking to somebody who's really into it um that was a trainer at the gym that i was a part of and i worked at from from time to time and he told me that zion's protein had like the best numbers in terms of like health benefits from a protein of anything he had ever seen before back in what? 2009 yeah. I wonder if it's still a thing. I think it is. It's just not promoted as much, you know, where we used to see it. I just never, I haven't uh, seen the, it in so long. By the way, I see people saying, uh, Ariel, don't do the uh, Becky Lynch interview on the MA hour. Why? Um, did anyone see the punch she landed on Dominic on Monday? That's the best punch. That's the best punch of the last 72 hours. <laughs> so sorry. That's a, that's a straight up. Yeah. If Amanda Hebus. Or or Rose had landed one of those shots in the other. A shot KO, baby. You gotta have Bex on. She's a real fighter. There he comes. She's a real fighter. So Brock I was watched, the Brock was the favorite coming into this, right? Too. Yeah, I think he was. Yeah. Okay. But I don't Even know. Like, there were no betting lines, were there not? Like, what were the betting lines? I don't think there were actually lines, right? I'll check topology. Real that, quick. I'm pretty sure. No, there, there were lines. Were, you just just the UFC didn't involve them in the broadcast like they do now. Oh yeah, I'm sure you could. Like, I'm sure, like in Vegas, you could go to the sports books and bet on the yeah. fights. Yeah, but you couldn't bet at you, you couldn't bet at the MGM properties because I remember because since this is an MGM event, you couldn't actually bet the sports book at Mandalay. You had to go to like the Palms or something to bet. It was I don't know whatever the gambling rules were back then. That's Sean uh, Shirk. That's Sean Shirk, right? Yep, there he is, Minnesota, Minnesota stand up. Oh, Eric, Eric, uh, Eric Paulson, Eric Paulson, CSW, Eric Paulson. Right down the street. Catch wrestling. Catch wrestling, baby. Catch as catch can. <laughs> Let's do this. Uh, Brock Lesnar hovering around a minus 225. So pretty, yeah. They, they, people okay, knew what no. was up. So he, he lost to Mir. He beat Herring. Beats Herring. Beats Couture. Anything? Or, oh, Couture. Or Couture. That, that, that was one I forgot. I forgot about Couture. Yeah, to, get, yeah. to get the title, yeah. Okay. What did uh, Mir do after he beat uh, Frank? 
What was it? What? I mean, I'm sorry, but what did Mir do after he beat Brock the first time? <sighs> the Nogera KO? Nogera KO? Okay. They did the Ultimate Fighter, uh, him and Nogera. I may be getting this out of order. I am getting it out of order. Um, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. Yes, the first Nogera fight. Yes, yes, yes. They did the Ultimate Fighter. They did the first Nogera fight. I thought Nogera was going to beat Mir. Very, very wrong. Um, Mir takes out uh, Nogera. It was almost like a uh, to win an interim title. So sorry, uh, Frank's the interim champion going into this. I forgot. There was an oh, Ultimate didn't... Fighter season with Frank Mir and Nogera. There it was. Yes, there it was. My God, man. <laughs> There's the tail of the yes, tape right funny. there. Uh, Brock right at the limit. Two-inch reach advantage. Frank's 30 in this fight. Brock's 31. Holy shit. And Bruce Buffer just looks so different. I mean, he looks like uh, Bruce Buffer. The, the winners... I love. The winners of their Ultimate Fighter season, both Team Noguera guys, uh, Efrain Escudero... And Ryan Ooh. Bader. Ryan Bader. Tough eight. Uh, uh. Uh, Vinny Megalhesh was also on there. Christoph Sosinski. I remember when Vinny was on that show. Oh, I thought he was going to kill. I, I thought he was like, going to run through the show. I'm like, Vinny's going to dominate the show. And uh, I think he got taken <laughs> out by Christoph. I think Christoph actually did. I'm watching Buff very closely here. Oh, is this the 360? Hamilton, Tony Weeks, and Glenn Nothing Trowbridge. Ham- Nothing Hamilton. The judges. And Herb Dean. There he is. Herb looks exactly the same. Yeah. Like, tr- truly, looks exactly the same as he did in 2009. Good for him. Let us all age as well as Herb Dean has. <laughs> okay. Oh, let's see. They don't show it, but wow, the way he had time. Buffer is like almost understated back then. I didn't, I didn't realize this. He is so much bigger, bigger than life now. Yeah, you like, hear the like, pep he, in his voice now. He's a whole different cat now. He's yeah, great. he's just like that. That it's time is always on camera now. This was off camera. They didn't even like show it. It was just kind of a thing. They just showed the fighters. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Who were Frank's three losses coming into this fight? I know Brandon Vera. Um, I'm forgetting. I'm, I feel like I'm just forgetting obvious stuff. I think Brandon Vera was, just a, was the one before this. I think, but I'm, I'm not. I'll, I'll look at it in a second. I don't know the uh, Ian Freeman was the first one, was it not? I remember oh, that. Right. I don't remember the second one. Um, I'll, I will look at it after Buff's announcement. Real. Is three and one the least amount of <laughs> MMA, MMA fights to fight for a title? Well, you know, he fought he fought Couture for the title at two and yeah, one, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. So at least two and one. Sure. Yeah. Outside of like, I guess early, like early, early UFCs, super champ fights. Yeah, like Kimo Leopoldo was like two and zero or something. <laughs> All right, I got the face off. The coming. final stare down. Brock is just a fucking monster, man. <laughs> uh, you, you, I don't think you guys were gonna get this. Uh, Marcio Cruz was the other his third his other loss before. before. <laughs> I mean, if, oh, you, yeah. if you give me a, if you give me five hundred guesses, I wouldn't have got that. Right. <laughs> Marcio Cruz, all right, knocked him out, knocked Frank Mir out. Here we go. Boom, we are underway. I know who wins, but I don't know when it happens. So Jed's not here to mess it up for me. Yeah, I can't. I, I, That's yeah, a nice leg kick by Brock, Brock eh? Hey, that was a nice yeah. leg kick. That was a nice leg kick. Those shorts are so baggy. Another one. <laughs> Those are <laughs> the baggy. Frank's too. Jesus Christ. Oh. Tiago Alves still has the the shorts of the night, though, for sure. I can't believe how baggy. Those, like, oh, oh, God. Both dudes landed. Oh, oh, go! Nah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right I again. learned. Yeah. Brock's like not oh, today, no. sir. Yeah, not today. Oh, no, not he today. adapted. That's and now you're just. It was at that oh, moment. Those, those, those little, those little yeah. boom, those little shots. That hurts. Oh my god! He's, he's just Brock choking him. Now. He's just, just choking him. him. <laughs> just, 
Look at his he's got arm. The thumb right in the larynx. <laughs> This is some dirty, like, Eric Paulson tricks. That just, like, we, just, <laughs> yeah, little things like that. God, I was just squishing them. Yeah. I was going to try to pin Brandon. that arm down. All your jujitsu training at this point means almost nothing with this much, like, <laughs> weight. And yeah, it's like. <laughs> I mean, he's just such, Brock was just such a freak, man. He's so strong. He's so heavy. Yeah, especially in this like position, w- yeah. Dude, like, leaves WWF, and he's just like, you know what? You know what I think would be fun? I'm going to try to play in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And then he's, like, the last guy cut from the Minnesota Vikings. And That's he's amazing. just like, nah, that didn't work. I'll go fight MMA. And he becomes the UFC heavyweight champion of the world. It's always, a lot of people scoff at him being cut. And it's like, he hadn't played an organized game of football since, like, college or something. And he was, like, he was like six or that. seven years removed. Uh, and had never played to anything close to the NFL level, right? He had played in college. He never played anything close to the NFL level. Oh, this is just nasty. This is not fun. Like we talk he's about, he's using how one arm. Mis- <laughs> he's oh. neutralizing both arms with one arm and Frank's head. How? He has a, yeah, he has he has a how headlock, is- and he's pinning down Frank's shoulder, and he's uppercutting <laughs> him in the face. How is he doing? Was, What's this great? Like, well, XL I mean- gloves. I mean, he's tr- he's really doing like really good, ca- uh, really good catch wrestling. Like the way he's pinning your hips oh. and the shoulders right now, everything is actually very technically well done from Brock. I it mean, is? beyond beyond just his strength. Yeah, like you, like you Mir can't. You don't become a yeah. You don't become a great fighter just by being big. You don't you don't become an NCAA wrestling champion just by being yeah. big. Like there's there's big people in college. There's big people in fighting. I mean, there's a uh, lot of Brock, yeah. Brock is just beating the holy hell out of Frank Bear right now. Which oh, is that like same a half move. Nelson? It's that like a half Nelson. Oh God! Yeah. And he's pinning the arm down. He's just yeah. Wailing. The way that yeah, the way that arm's trapping the both the trapping his arm his underside arm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he's just annihilating him. This is miserable. Like this has to be just like <laughs> the worst place in the world to be. Oh. Yeah, Frank. One. Yeah, Frank can't even. I'm like, what is your Frank? I'm trying to even think. Oh, what, he what, what, the body. Oh what do you God. what do you do in this situation? You try to survive till the round bell, I guess. And you're not gonna sweep him. You're not gonna like He's trying, he's trying. but he can't he can't even yeah. budge him. His right arm's just kind of uh, kind of neutralized by this like quasi headlock position. It's so weird. Now he's going to the oh, body. God. Oh that sucks. There's nothing fun about yeah. this at all. Yeah, Frank's yeah, face Fra- is already like Frank. Well- yeah, Frank. Ha- Frank has to frame with that. Okay, now okay, you got that arm out now. Like you can just see all the lumps on Frank's face. There's one on his head. There's like two yeah. on his cheek. His face is just getting mangled right now. This version of Brock fares very well in today's you. And well, I I, I don't. Th- I was gonna say what a bold take by me when you consider the somewhat dire state of the heavyweight division. Like you know. I my, mean- he's- it is hey, heavyweight relax. relax, yeah. relax, relax with these takes. Stop trolling. <laughs> <laughs> I Come guess uh, it's not not very bold, is it? So. Frank's got a cut yeah. on the nose. Because like even even like a Cyril Gan, who like you know athletically probably a pretty good match for Lesnar, just the wrestling would he would just crush Cyril, right? I mean, I don't think Cyril. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know because the, the there's so much better techniques and coaching now. Yeah. But yeah. at this time, though. The what Frank what what Brock is doing is just perfect and against an opponent yeah. like Frank too and Frank's so content on his back like I'm s- yes a little too content that's probably right, one of the problems is he just batters. he just assumes on on the ground I will kill him right that's his thought yeah. if this goes to the ground I that's my world I'm I am the, yeah. one of the best grapplers submission artists in the world at heavyweight there's no way he can just dominate me for however long on the ground and we just saw it we just saw five minutes of domination ten eight I mean. Honestly, it's almost like a ten seven. It's such a it's such a beat down. Like yeah, that was definitely a ten eight. Um, I I wouldn't give ten seven because I don't think there was a there was a point there wasn't a point that they were going to stop the fight. But definitely a ten mm-hmm. eight. Yeah, for, for, sure. Yeah, this version pre diverticulitis <laughs> Brock Lesnar. Yeah, be lazy bed well. said uh, just said an, an NCAA champion wrestler would do well in modern heavyweight. You don't say AK. <laughs> Right. Bull take, bull take. 
Shut up. I guess just a freak, a freak of nature athlete. Oh my gosh. So Amazing. coordinated, so explosive. Such a great tattoo. One of the worst. Oh, it's terrible. It's Come on. Awful tattoo. <clears throat> All right, round two. Let's see if Frank can turn it around here. Brock just Pretty popped. Why'd you throw a kick? Yeah. I can't believe you yeah, threw a that kick. Was it. That was it. Brock's letting him up. Brock's like, come on, dude. He's let it. I forgot. Well, you know, that was smart. Up. He let him up because he would because he would only gone to his guard. <laughs> so, yep. but it's still Ooh. dangerous. To, oh, 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 elbow I, in there. That hurts. Oh, knee to the body. Oh, what the is Frank knee. doing? There's, There's the knee. jumping knee. There's the jumping knee. Why oh. would you? Oh my! I, I forgot. I forgot that how Frank. Why did Frank leave the ground? You know, I think pre, he pre Weidman spinning kick. That was yeah. the choice. I think he caught him pretty good with that one knee to the body, and maybe thought like, man, if I hit him with one of those, I, I, he'll go down or something. I don't know, but it's also just a split second, you know, decision. Yeah, right? just, just but you know. still, like we were talking about GSP not making those that fight IQ. Frank yeah. did not have the fight IQ that that night. A, a jumping knee with his leg, his other leg already like being held by Lesnar. Oh, what a almost horrible like, spot It's almost right like a, a Hail Mary, <laughs> Hail Mary uh, crane kick thing. And just uh, the beginning just of the end, my friends. Brutality. Uh, uh, the little baby, the, the Rock Lesnar baby fists. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> these, weren't even, these weren't even really baby. These weren't even the Lesnar baby fists. These no, were no, just, they these are man yeah. fists. Oh. No, no, he doesn't do a lot of hammer fisting in this one. I love the hammer fist, but doesn't do a lot of that. Yeah, the, the little short hammer fist. Yeah, the, wrist, the, wrist control. No I mean. Oh, this is a oh, this spot. Ow, 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 ow. There we go. All right, that's a good uh, pokey pokey right. herb. All right, 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 right. Stop it. And this is where Brock just. Gets all real weird. Frankly, doesn't even I, know where he is. No, he's out. I, I don't know if I was ever more afraid of a fighter Brock than after this, shit. than at this moment. I love Brock goes straight into pro wrestling mode. That's great. Go straight. Look at this guy. And then they start booing him. Double birds. Oh, Stone Cold. I didn't. I, I didn't. I for, I forgot that they booed him. Like Brock was considered a heel. Cold Stone. After Cold that. Stone. Mo after Double that birds. moment when he got. When he got in, he Frank's, got in face, Frank's face, in there, yeah, that's that's when they just started booing him. Yeah, I didn't recall that. I don't. Rock very angry, very upset. What do you want? <laughs> he just yeah, he just shouted the physician, the ringside physician. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Brock, fight's over! Fight's oh, over. dude, this is so brutal. Ow, 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 ow. Herb could have stopped that like six punches before that, but. Definitely. Oi. He's like, dude, it's so brutal. Oh. Like here, he could have stopped it. Like Frank is not even like yeah. defending himself anymore. He's just getting ravaged. But Frank's like pretty much out here already. And Brock just hits him about eight more times. Oh, this shot. I remember this. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh God. He's, like the he's like the xenophobe in Aliens. It's like just the second when the second mouth comes out and then, oh, my God. Yeah. What a what a showman. What a showman. Frank looks Zen like a Xenomorph. Human. Excuse me, guys. Sorry, my nerds. Xenomorph. Dana smiling. I have a feeling that he won't be smiling about two minutes after this, when Brock oh, gets on the microphone. Let's see what we get to hear, though. There's no way that the Coors Light line makes it on this broadcast. There's no way. Hey, wait, UFC, in free UFC is all about freedom of speech, bro. So we'll find out. <laughs> it will be I – mean, I, we'll see. We'll, we're see. about to find out, Casey. All right. I want to hear this. Yeah. And they're booing the shit out of Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I love it. Keep going. Keep going. Man, I should have bought a Death Clutch t-shirt for this. Brock's so upset. What does he say? Mm -hmm. Horse up his ass.
That's great. Uh, I pulled that still horseshoe up. out and beat that some bitch still... over the head with it. Oh, man. If you're Frank Mayer just sitting there, like, listening to all this shit, boy, it's tough. Is this the best post-fight speech of all time? Uh, it's, five. It's, it's up there. I, 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 Habib after Michael Johnson was pretty damn good. I They didn't do it. Oh, freedom of they speech, UFC. It. Freedom of speech. Oh, freedom of speech. It. Listen, they edited it out. And there's uh, there's Sable Rina Mero. Uh, oh. go home. At least I'm they, gonna go home. Uh, I'm gonna Mozart. sit down with my friends. And you can tell he's getting ramped up. <laughs> ramped up, he's about to say it. And then it's just like I might uh. even get it from my wife. They cut it out. At least they I kept knew they were cut it out. I'm so disappointed in Dana White. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> All right, I, I want to pull it up just so. Uh... Oh, we're right, we're, we're, we're interviewing concussed fighters, Air. Yep, definitely. Yes. But Frank is eloquent uh, as ever, really. I mean, <laughs> he's he's taking it very well. Brock Lesnar. Um, what was it? What was the official line? Frank Mir to horse up his ass. I told him that a year ago. I pulled that some bitch up and beat him over the head with it. I love it. I love it. I'm gonna go home tonight. I'm gonna sit down with my friends and family. I'm gonna be drinking Coors Light. That's right, Coors, because Bud Light won't pay me anything. And hell, I might even get on top of my wife tonight. See y'all later. <laughs> Brock Lesnar said. Why would the why would Dana edit that out? Why would I mean, he do that? They are a current Spud Light is a current sponsor of the UFC again, again, uh, Casey. So that that partnership is back. So they got freedom of speech, bro. Well, you know. However, um, Brock Lesnar went back at the post fight press conference, and he said this. Frank Mir came prepared. It was an honor to be here at UFC 100. Good people pay their hard earned money to see a fight. So I just throw a little salt and pepper to make it better. I am truly sorry for the way I acted. It was an embarrassment. I'm not too picky with beer, people. I'll drink anything. Tonight, I'm going to be drinking Bud Light. Frank Muir is a great fighter. The only thing I truly had against him was he beat me. I'm a sore loser. So when I won tonight, I just let my emotions get the better of me. I came from an entertainment business. People want to know what I could bring from WWE. Well, you just saw it. There you go. There you go. Right. That's that's something he and McGregor have in common. We're turning this like, off, right? We're not watching. Yeah, this yeah, show. we're, we're, yeah, we're, 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 we're done. Well, people, if you want to stick around and watch this post, then go ahead. That's something that Lesnar and McGregor had in common was you got it. You you can have it both ways. Uh, like you can be the classy guy and you can be the over the top character, but you got to find a clear divide. Sometimes Connor was the opposite. Sometimes it was immediately after the fight that he would do the like, oh yeah, yeah, there's a great fight, but and then later in like the post fight press conference or just an interview the next day, he would just shred, just shred the opponent, but he would at least give like both quotes. So like people could say, Oh, Brock's respectful. Look, look, look what he said post fight. And then you could also point to Brock's not disrespectful. Look what he said friggin' live on the pay-per-view in front of everybody. <laughs> that's the real Brock, but you got, you give people both options. You're golden. That's, that's what kind of helps make it like this, these compelling characters that, uh, that people get behind. So that feels like honestly more than 15 years ago. Yes. Have we been doing this too long? Have we been doing this too long? Like that feels like twenty years ago. That feels like a lifetime ago. Oh, can I wonder if you guys someone got double check it? Someone's claiming the YouTube version had the Bud Light. It could. It, the, the YouTube version is four hours and forty five minutes long. So I do wonder if they didn't. Oh, cut it's any, way long. Probably the entire yeah. way longer. Yeah, it's almost like twice it's the as whole long. card. Super long. Yeah. Oh, but from the very first fight. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's the All entire right. card. But they could All still right. cut that. Like I'm surprised. I'm surprised they could still cut that part out. I guess they didn't. But. Um, Interesting. Again. But it's not on Plus. It's not on Fight Pass. What uh, a moment. Bonuses, bonuses for UFC 100, guys. Uh, fight of the night, as we talked about earlier. Uh, the main card opener between Yoshihiro Aka Akayama and Alan Belcher. Knockout of the night. Nobody's surprised. Dan Henderson. Submission of the night goes to Filthy Tom Lawler. You got 100 grand? And all the fighters got $100,000. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good on you, Filthy Tom. Uh, you. Reported, uh, per the Nevada State Athletic Commission, uh, does not include sponsor money or locker room bonuses, payouts for UFC 100. Uh, Brock Lesnar, $400,000. Uh, 
no win bonus. Frank Mir, $45,000. That's criminal. That is... <laughs> Look what just happened to Frank Mir. He only got paid $45,000 for that. That's not right. George, George St. Pierre made $400,000, but that was 200 to show, 200 to win. Uh -huh. uh, Tiago Alves, the co-main eventer, made $15,000 more than Frank Mir did. $60,000. Oh, wow. I think we can say with confidence Brock and GSP both got pay-per-view points, though, right? I, I don't recall the reports at the time, but champs. I believe this was yeah. a thing. They were champs. And this event did a monster. I don't know if you, you – I'll leave you to reveal it after, Mike. This event did a monster monster pay-per-view ever so i think 1.6 did 1.6 1. 1. million it was the million. biggest pay-per-view it was the biggest wow. ufc pay-per-view of all time by a whole hell of a lot um until well, ufc if, 202 that's if that's brocker gsp yeah. if brocker gsp got any piece of that pie they both did pretty pro again probably still underpaid we'll always say this guys are the fighters are just not way paid. underpaid but, no but, brock but was they, underpaid they got, a, they got a good chunk of the pie though for sure uh brock was in gsp for sure uh, other big payouts, Dan Henderson made $250,000, including a $150,000 win bonus. Michael Bisping made $150,000. Yeah, smart. He made $105,000 more than Frank Mir did, which is crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, Akiyama made $60,000 with the win bonus. Mark Cole made $100,000 with his win bonus. Uh, Dong Hyun Kim made $58,000. Hey, good for you, DK. Uh, John Fitch, $90,000. Includes a win bonus. Defeated Paulo Tiago, who made a life changing eight thousand dollars for his That's post appearance. Wow! Uh, the second lowest wow. paid fighter on the card, actually third lowest paid fighter on the card. Uh, the second lowest paid fighter on the card was Matt Grice, who made seven thousand dollars, and TJ Grant made five thousand dollars. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's like ten thousand Canadians, so that's all right. So oh. they did. They, listen, they did an exchange right there. Uh, We've come, so. <laughs> come a long See, way, guys. We've come a long way. John Jones made eighteen thousand dollars. Was that there pre? Was that pre John Jones at Jackson's? I don't, uh, I don't think so. I think John was. He was at Jackson's right then. I remember. This. Okay, I, I got. It. I don't know. We'll find out. So this is, and some of these payouts are what the UFC points to when they're like, oh my gosh, we have doubled or tripled our payouts for like since, uh, since whatever, uh, 15 years ago. But then you realize like, oh, like the only reason that number is impressive is impressive. And it's not that impressive is because they were so criminally low. Like saying you tripled, like, oh, we used to pay fighters as low as eight thousand at five thousand dollars. And we, we've quadrupled that now for men or doubled it, tripled it. That's not good. That's, but they've that's, that's, but yeah. they've times twenty their revenue or whatever like right the, exactly yeah. Yeah. it's 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 all that. about revenue share it's not about it's right. revenue share it's revenue share it's all that that's matters true. all right it's just crazy. Right. but that was a good time that was a good time sorry guys sorry to bring it you know what I hate to be a stick in the mud that yeah yeah I'm, I'm not yeah I don't want to yeah it's, no it's just it's it's just I, I I didn't bring this up to be a like a dickhead I brought it up <laughs> to just be like this is, this is also a time where Nevada disclosed the payouts. Where that which is way a thing of the past now, which is pretty wild to think about. And there were like like we talked about, there's locker room bonuses and pay per view points and things of that nature. Uh, there's sponsorship money, which obviously isn't part of the disclosed pay. So there's a lot of different things that that sort of factor into it. But it's just kind of crazy to look back and and just see like Brock Lesnar makes four hundred thousand dollars and Frank Mir makes forty five disclosed payout. It's crazy. It's just crazy to think about, but. So that is UFC 100, ladies and gentlemen. That was it. Uh, four fight main card. And I did see a comment earlier that Casey brought up. Good times. Are we doing UFC 200? Yes, we are. Uh, one week from tonight, ladies and gentlemen. One week from tonight. So get a good night's sleep Monday because I don't think this one's going to be two hours and 15 minutes long. I think 200 is going to be a little bit longer. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun, of course. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people on who are on uh, that weren't here tonight because they were at UFC 200 and they experienced all the fight week craziness. Casey can share his stories. Mm -hmm. uh, Damon will hop in, share his story. Shaheen was there as well. Jose was there as well. Maybe Helwani will jump in, tell some tales of UFC 200. But a whole shitload of stuff happened. There'll be a lot of background building into UFC 200. Uh, much more than tonight, although there were some interesting things that came out of this. The Limp Biscuit stuff, I think, was maybe the funniest <laughs> thing of all. But 
you can go back and check that out. But thank you all very much. I appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. Shout out to DraftKings for making this a part of our routine, the road to UFC 300, which is going to be super fun. But again, next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, UFC 200 watch party, headlined by Misha Tate, defending her title against Amanda Nunes. For her, Casey, AK, shout out to Jed and Steven as well. And shout out to all of you for watching. I am Mike Heck. Get some sleep, everybody. Good night.